Good evening. Welcome to our study session. It says we have a special night for our study session, so be excited. Um, the first thing we're going to go to is the study session topics. We're going to discuss um, number 21-079, the discussion on proposed downtown historic district, um, historic integrity and contributing structures. And I think, Andrea, you're going to go from here. Yes, I have a presentation. Okay. Okay, so I really do think this is actually a special meeting because it's kind of the culmination of a lot of work that HPB board members have done over the past number of months. And we're going to be discussing the homework assignment tonight that was given out uh, last month. And specifically with respect to the integrity and, of structures and which would be contributing in the proposed downtown historic district. Again, the purpose is to classify these properties in the downtown historic district. And so here's a little bit of information. The board and staff have worked together to complete a lot of work already. There's been a resurvey of a portion of downtown in the area that is proposed for the downtown historic district. There's a final report for that, and that is attachment two in your packet. And there's also a spreadsheet that goes with that, and that is also in your packet. There was a determination of properties for historic integrity and contributing to the historic district. So most of the properties of the 71 properties in the proposed boundary um, have been identified as uh, contributing or not. Uh, by HP board members, not the full board yet, but um, by some very competent board members. But there were a number of properties that didn't necessarily fall easily into one of the categories. And so uh, what, the, what the purpose of this meeting is to take those remaining properties, mm. take a look at them, look at the criteria for integrity, and make a determination on how they should be classified for the application. And here's a map of where they're located. As you see, they're mostly on the west side of downtown and they're the, the properties highlighted in dark blue. We'll be going through them one by one, in just a minute. The homework assignment included a worksheet and this is an excerpt from that. And each of the properties for tonight's discussion is listed uh, on a row here. And the area that's highlighted in yellow is the area that HPB was to fill in. Mm. So right here, property meets criteria for integrity. So this is where you would put yes or no, area for notes. And then um, again, over here, integrity and contributing yes or no. Homework assignment included some information on the seven aspects of, uh, of integrity and also what is a contributing property. Andrea, um, I apologize about the interruption. Would you be able to do, use uh, full screen? Oh boy, yeah, let's see. I think I had this problem before. Okay. Um, is it hard to read that? Yeah, a little, I think. Uh, uh, it may be to do with sort of the extra stuff at the top and bottom. At the top, yeah, yeah. Let's it should be under, under view full screen for PowerPoint. Well, the problem is I guess I'm not on PowerPoint. Ah. So can I ask a, a remedial question and I apologize, but sure. re reading through this, um, could you remind me again of what is the definition? I understand what historic integrity is intended to convey. What is contributing? What 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 is, since that seems like a key thing we're voting on, what is what? How do you describe what contributing is? Sure. So um, there is a definition in the homework assignment. We'll, we can get, go over that. Um, it's a site structure or object within a historic district that's significant, and it was present during the period of significance. The period of significance is identified as a period of time in which a group of buildings and area has been um, developed 
And, and that was through the terms, 70s, right? It was like 1890s through the 1970s. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, potentially uh, the period of significance could be modified through discussion in this group. But that's what our starting point is, 1870 through, through 1970. So that's really quite a wide range for a period of significance. And that's kind of what makes it tricky a little bit for downtown Littleton, because we're a we were a agricultural settlement that has grown up into small town and into you know a city, and we have seen a lot of change on Main Street. And the idea, since uh, the first historic districts that came about on Main Street, is that um, we want to capture the change, and not just simply go back to the Victorian era that was originally built here, but capture mm -hmm. the change of how. Littleton um, grew up to be a, a city and all the changes that, that occurred on Main Street. And so, um, and then we, we're gonna discuss each one of these buildings and there's actually not gonna be a vote tonight because it's a study session. So it'll be um, a casual opportunity to have, have back and forth between board members. And okay. I might chime in too and uh, get a feel for what people think. And mm -hmm. then we will talk about uh, next steps towards the end of, um, of the evening based on okay. what, what it was that we kind of came up with it tonight. And historic so, integrity is like structural integrity, right? It, it, meaning it's still integral, it's still holding together. Okay. It hasn't deviated too far from its original. Well, um, integrity, Not necessarily. yeah, okay. that Not can necessarily. be part of it, but um, integrity has seven different aspects to it. And in the end, you know, you want to evaluate each one of the seven that's in your um, homework assignment, what they are. In the end, mm -hmm. it's not really so much a science as it is an art. You got mm -hmm. to look at the building and say, well, does it really convey uh, a sense of history within that period of significance? Um, does it have the materials and the feeling and the perhaps it has an association um, that all come together to say, yes, this property um, overall feels that it has integrity. Someone can feel that it represents what it is historically significant for. Mm -hmm. And, and can I interrupt here for a second? The National sure. Register also simplifies the definition for integrity to, to tell applicants sometimes that it should be that someone from the past would, be need, would need to be able to recognize the candidate should he or she return to the property today. Wow. That's just kind of, that simplifies it. That came off the National Register. Yeah. Wow, wild. That's wild. Okay. But yeah. I'd like to add that it's um, each property is different. Yes. And so um, depending on what the property is significant for will depend on which um, areas of integrity you look at and focus on. Right. And I think the one, the article that was attached from Louisiana um, really gives good examples as to how, mm -hmm. you know, if something's... Um, significant for architecture, then, you know, materials, design, and workmanship are going to be key under integrity, um, whereas location isn't as much. Um, but, you know, a rural schoolhouse is definitely going to look at things like setting and location and association, um, more so than maybe materials. Um, so, you know, each property is, is kind of unique, um, so to speak. Thank you. And, and, to the property's individual period of significance. So we also have a, I don't think it's official from 1890 to 1970 yet, Andre, is it? It's is not it, official, no. It's, right now we're at 1890 to 1955. That is the period of significance for the National Register portion of our landmark district downtown. But we're going to districts. 1970. Yeah, and, and I, I picked 1970 for now because that was the period of significance that was identified in our downtown design guidelines that was done oh, maybe about nine or 10 years ago. And the existing landmark district never identified a period of significance, did it? That, yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. The National Register, but not the local right. um, design guidelines. Yes, I mean, it's, well, we have multiple layers here. And mm -hmm. for those of you that are, are new, there's a lot to catch up on here. 
<laughs> and so listen and ask questions. That's, that's all great for tonight. We'll all have an opportunity to um, speak back and forth. Okay. Okay, so let's go back to this worksheet. Yeah, so we'll go through each one of these properties one by one and kind of work our way through and see what we come up with. So <clears throat> before we start, Andrea, I have a question. We cannot vote, right? No. Yeah, not, study session is no voting. But are we stating a yes or no opinion? Yeah, I think we can give direction the board okay. members can give direction to staff. Right. Now, at the end, we may come out with very clear direction or maybe not quite so clear. And that's at that point, we will decide um, how to proceed. You know, one of the outcomes might be that HPB says tonight, hey, we think that we should have a complete list of all the properties, all 71 of them in the proposed boundary, come back to HPB for a vote. I like that it, it, as a whole list rather than property by property, right? Right, right. And then, of course, there can be discussion again. You know, somebody right. may say, hey, I think, you know, I'd like to rediscuss this. And, you know, the board has an opportunity to vote it up or down. I like that idea of listing every property. I think there's more than 71, though. But we have non-contributing properties. So having a list of contributing non-contributing because we know what they are already and then right and then if there's any that are questionable that we still need to discuss we can put on or otherwise it's be one or the it could just be one yeah the, well, basically the we basically we already have that we have the list that david and i worked on and you and and chris worked on and we've gone through and the properties we're discussing tonight are the ones that we had questions on the others are either contributing or non-contributing already decided, I guess. Right. So these are the only properties that we have a question on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so these are the big discussion item um, properties. And uh, Rick, I think the reason w that um, you're saying there are more than 71 properties is that there are different ways to count downtown. Mm -hmm. We have more buildings than we have properties. And so that's another point of confusion there. Mm -hmm. But we're looking at individual buildings, not properties. So. Yeah. Um, ulti right. That'll be right. And that'll be yet another discussion point, how to capture them in our list. So in your definition of property, Andrew, what does that mean? There's two buildings on one property? We, yeah, we have a number of a building of properties with more than one building on it. Um, one example is the property at the corner, at the southwest corner of Main Street and Curtis, where Penny Robin is, that's yep. on the same property as the building behind it, where the pottery place was. Um, it's the second building down from Penny Robbins. It's the, uh, the Main Street Cutters, Right. And portion it, of the building that's tied to that <clears throat> Curtis Street that's, building. That's the only one that we have that's, that's a property. The, the other 14 are actual buildings. But but the other buildings in the entire downtown, they're all individual buildings, not multiple properties. Because mm -hmm. I can't think of any that would be, they maybe have the same owner, but is that the same as a property? That's the question. Yes, we do. Well, let's not get bogged down in this. We can, yeah. you know, work through that later. But yeah, there are there are definitely um, properties with more than one building on them, more than a few actually. All right. I don't. Okay. I don't know what they are. Oh, well. Okay. Go ahead, Andrea. Andrea. You're frozen. That's not good. <laughs> uh oh. Oh, you lost her. Oh dear. Before. Once we, we get to the end of the, I'm sorry? You were oh, you froze for a moment, Andrea. Okay, I see my internet connection is unstable. I just got to. Go ahead and go off down. video and try to uh, press F11 on your keyboard as well. Okay, well, um, let's see. I'm going to stop the share here. Okay. And. Okay, so 
Well, it seems to be going okay now, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Are you going to share your screen again? Well, I'm essentially at the end of the presentation. Okay. So I think we're just at the, at the, at the slide that said uh, next steps, and we'll talk about that at the end of tonight. And then uh, if there are any questions, we can talk about them right now. Otherwise, we can get going with uh, Laura and start working through the properties on your list. Okay, so um, does anybody have any questions before we start on the first property? Hey, Chris? I have, I have one question. So after we go through these 14 properties, are we gonna have a chance to kind of just, I guess, double check that everything in the district or the proposed district um, that we're all in agreement before this goes forward? Well, there may be agreement or there may not be. And so that would be, uh, you know, I, I tend to believe there will largely be agreement, but- you know, How about majority agreement? <laughs> well, yeah, and, that, and I think that's the purpose of having the, the vote at a regular meeting. Okay. So. okay. so- So we have the conversation tonight in the study session and then Depending on what we decide tonight, we may or may not then take it to a vote either as a, the full district or property by property. Is that am right. I understanding that right? Okay, sorry. That's how I'm. That's how I'm understanding it. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, here's my question to you all. Let's talk about the first property. Do we want to see if everybody just says yes or no on historic integrity and yes or no on contributing? And if we're all in agreement, then just go to the next property, or do we want to discuss it? Totally. I mean, it's up to you all. What do you think? Chris? I guess I would say like if, if we're pretty much all in agreement, I don't know that there's a need to really have a big discussion about it. I, I, um, that's what I think. I think it seems sure like a waste of time, but you know, we could be here for a while anyway with some of the other ones. So I feel like if, if we're all like, yes, that one contributes, like then let's move on. Okay. All right. So 2530 West Main Street is um, Jake's Beer Garden. Um, I guess everybody who thinks it's contributing, give a thumbs up. Okay, that one's easy. Good job. Okay. Now, um, now Laura, before we go. Yes. So we have three new board members that may or may not be real familiar with these buildings. So what I would encourage you to do is ask questions if you have any questions about these buildings. It's the only way you're gonna learn about the history of them. Um, some of, them, of us have looked at them in great detail. So it's, it's okay to, to have questions because that's how you're gonna learn what we're gonna be um, determining it's a, contributing for it's this. It's a steep learning curve. <laughs> it's a very steep learning curve, but you have to ask the questions because it's not so easy. Well, I just... I, I was just going to say all the, you know, the, the site forms from the 1997 survey. Yeah. Are all Do you all have the, that? If they yeah. don't have it, they're all on the website. Like, you know, make sure, I mean, I had a steep learning curve um, as well last year. And I feel like I'm still on a steep learning curve a year later. Um, but all of the, the survey forms are online, which is really helpful. And, and I do, I, I can put them, I've got these survey forms that I can share a screen with if we'd like to. I, I recommend that. I would actually benefit from the material that was in the packet. I mean, of course I read it, but I, I kind of assumed we would be going over it. <laughs> and the other so, thing you, pardon me, the other thing you can do is you could get on Zillow.com, believe it or not, and put in that address and have it come It'll show you on the map on Zillow what that property looks like from above. And you usually, if you know downtown Littleton pretty well, you can go, oh, I know which building that is now. If, no. you, if you don't have a clue, that's another way to look at it. Sure. Right, and that, that would be a current photograph. And what we're looking right. here on the, on the um, surveys are from 1997. Mm. Okay, so this is the 1997 one for 2530 West Main Street. We've all agreed it ha it's contributing. So let's go to the next property, unless there's any questions. Anybody have a question? No, or let me just state two facts about this building. Okay. It is the oldest building on Main Street, mm -hmm. 1886. It was moved there in 1900. 
It's been a continuous restaurant or bar since 1939. And it was also determined eligible for the national, uh, contributing to the National Register District as well, this building here. So. Okay. I think it's worth pointing out that um, it's been modified over the years. So mm -hmm. the, upper por the upper portion, I think, is, is um, much older than what we see down here that uh, was a change that occurred. Uh, what do you 50s, think? 50s, 50s, I think, based yeah. on the brick. Based on the brick, yeah, and that angled entrance, so it's no longer um, flush with the with the sidewalk. It which probably was had from that in. era. It was a three bay storefront, probably one door, probably in the middle with windows on the side. Those columns are the original columns there. Mm -hmm. so. But you know, as we talked about the period of significance, we're looking up to all the way up to 1970. And so modifications that occurred to the building can be significant in their own right. Correct. In this case, where someone might want to sneak into the bar. <laughs> yeah. And I would reiterate, just because of our new board members, that um, we have talked a lot about um, that commercial buildings probably see more changes um, than any other buildings. Mm -hmm. And that's because every time there's a new tenant, they modify the building in some way, shape or form um, mm -hmm. to address their needs and, and how they use the building. And so, um, like Andrea said, we have a, a, you know, a period of significance, a range. And so um, that's one thing that, you know, we look at these changes have occurred within that period of significance, which they have. Yeah. And, and they also has so the development of Main Street, how it developed over the years. And, and in case it hasn't been stated yet, it's the exterior that we're most interested in, not necessarily changes to the inside. Mm. Okay. These comments are really helpful. Thank you all just for kind of bringing us along even when this conversation. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I was going to ask um, how, why, I guess, why aren't these buildings like opted in already? Like when, when the historic district was created, were businesses or buildings able to just opt in and not necessarily like a blanket over all of downtown? And then what does designating them, you know, a historic structure do necessarily for like the property owner? Yeah, well, that's, that's that could be a hour long discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just the cliff notes then. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we, we do have, yes, we do right now have an opt-in Main Street Historic District. It's extremely unusual. Um, and the state is not happy with us, in fact a district really ought to be um, a contiguous boundary, not just who wants to be in, who wants to be out. You, you know, the idea is to capture um, a period of development um, based on boundaries that follow patterns of development. And so uh, for political reasons at the time, back in 2005, uh, we had a lot of people who did not want to have the restrictions of being in a historic district. And so what the city council said at that time was, well, we either can have nothing, you know, we worked at this a long time, mm -hmm. or we can have this opt-in district. And that's what was, and that's, you know, what we, the city chose at that time. At this time, we're kind of in a different point, point in time. The district, I would say, most found it um, pretty successful. And so uh, council says, well, we want, um, we'd like to propose a district with everyone in at this point. Everyone would have the same rules. We're not kind of going, oh, you have one set of rules, next building over a different set of rules, you know? And, and many property owners, last thing I'll say, many property owners who are looking to buy into the district like the, um, the vision and the stability that everybody has the same rules. So that in other words, if they put in a lot of money to restoring a, a building, they know that the next door neighbor won't um, allow the building to deteriorate or to take the design in a very different direction where we start to have incompatibility. Gotcha, this great, thank you. Did, this building is opted in. It opted in after 2011. There's Excellent. also financial incentives for properties that are either locally landmarked, 
um, or in the National Register District. Um, they can qualify for tax credits or grants in oh, order to um, facilitate, you know, maintaining the historic appearance of their building. Hey, okay. I brought up the front of the building if you'd like me to share what it looks like. Oh, we know. Not okay. that one. <laughs> that's oh, not that's the next one. That's the next one. All right. Is everybody I, ready I think to go? Mike, Mike has had his little hand raised and it looks like he's oh, been wanting to say something. Him. Oh yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, just a quick point of order, Vice Chair Gabriel. Since we will probably be voting on the, on this whole package at some point in the future, uh, you know, as we roll through these, if you could uh, frame it in such a way that it's, uh, does anyone have concerns with this being uh, on the uh, contributing something like that, rather than? Uh, kind of up and down vote, I would appreciate it. Okay, we can do that. Okay, shall we go okay. back to um, 2530 West Main Street and say, does anyone have any concerns with this being a contributing property? And I can't see everybody, so um, because of the range Oh, I'm sharing. sorry, here I can fix that. Yeah. I believe I can. Yeah, Jason, we need to see you, I think. Oh, do yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah. meeting. Yeah. Got it, no problem. Okay, it looks like nobody has any concerns on Jake's Beer Garden. So we will go ahead and say that that will be contributing for our report. Is that okay? Mike, is that okay? Uh, yeah, well, let's see. Well, uh, the recommendation is that- I was just gonna say recommendation. That would be voted on later. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, so we will recommend to the board that Jake's Beer Garden be considered as a contributing property at this point. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Let's go to 2600 West Main Street. It's the Harry Post building. And Penny Robin is um, currently um, there. And that's a picture of it. And I do want to tell you on the survey that Chris and Rick did, the thing that we had um, talked about on this one was there had been no material changes between 97 and 2020. And they found that it did not have integra field integrity and that it was in poor condition. Um, so that was the information that was on these surveys. Um, does anybody have any thoughts on this property as to contributing or non-contributing? Chris? Yes, I do. Um, I have some notes um, on my little worksheet. Um, and I, you know, this is one I, I've struggled with whether I would consider this a contributing or a non-contributing building. And the reason is, is that, um, you know, I look at it, okay, this is called the Harry Post building. I, I would imagine that this is not recognizable as the Harry Post building. Um, but my question is, do we have any idea of when these changes occurred to this building? Because this building might have looked like this longer than it did the Harry Post building. And if that's the case, yeah, you know, like yeah. if, if this change occurred, say in the 1930s or the 1940s, it's been this way longer than it was the other way. Yeah, Chris, I, I agree. I, I think that's a, a good point. And I, I, I don't have older pictures of this, but I have memories okay. of what this looked like in the 1970s when it was a sporting goods shop. Mm -hmm. And it looked exactly the same right. as it does now. So then and my thing would be is, you know, if it could be significant kind of in its own right. Exactly. And it was a change that occurred during the period of significance. Then mm -hmm. I would say, you know, we would look at recommending it to be contributing, even though it has had integrity changes from what it was originally. And if we don't really know what it looked like originally, then. Right. There's that. In the 1997 right. survey, um, the, the statement of significance says, that this building is associated with the historic commercial development of downtown Littleton. And that in itself would give, make it a contributing building. Mm -hmm. So, okay, does anybody have any concerns on this property? Mm -hmm. and, and yell if I don't call on you because I can't see everybody on the same screen. I don't have any concerns. And Amy's probably the only one that has seen these buildings before 1980. So we're going to rely <laughs> on you, Amy. Thanks a lot, Rick. <laughs> this building has looked like this since I moved here in 81. I can't go any earlier than that. So 
Okay. Mr. Renski's from here. So yeah, okay. it the same. Maybe okay, so just parents too. <laughs> I was going to say for what it's worth. I mean, I've, I've lived here my whole life and I remember it as always being Penny Robin dance studio. Like I used to get my ballet supplies from there in the early nineties for what it's worth. Yeah. But hey, I'm probably old enough to be your mom, you know, and so <laughs> that's probably not going back very far. <laughs> okay. okay, so back to, does anybody have any concerns with recommending this to be a contributing um, property going forward? None. No. None? Okay. All right. So I'm going to mark that as we're going to recommend that one as contributing. Okay. So are we all right to go to the next property? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're talking about 2609 West Main Street, Merle's Alignment, and it's Halink Restaurant. I don't know how you say that. Halinkes. Okay. Um, Rick, do you want to tell us a little bit about this property? <laughs> you, you know more on this one. <laughs> well, embedded in this building, and you're looking at the historic picture there. Right. Um, we have a current well, photo. Well, yes, yeah. let me pull yeah. something. Google, yeah. Google Street yeah. View is good. Hmm. I mean, I could go if back it, to saying on, on the survey that Rick and Chris did, they did comment that the material changes has been totally converted to a restaurant. It did not have field integrity. And the original building is within the new structure, including the extension to the main street frontage. Yeah, so, so you can see, oops, if you go back. So yeah, you can see the pointed um, hmm you know, the, the roof behind. I will point mm -hmm. out that's yeah. not the original that's roof. That's not the original. No. You gotta look the, at this, right. the angle change. This deal over here is the original. You the other side, the west side. Yeah, that's the original. And if, if you click the where it says street view in the top left, the arrow that goes down, you can see going back to 2007, you can kind of if see you in real time the clock, changes. It'll yeah, take you back in time. So mm -hmm. top left. Now there. The red but part going is up. original. Oh yeah. Right. Yes, this this part is original here. Okay. So so go ahead, Rick. So I'll just explain what happened. They kept Please. the original gas station, which was cast concrete, mm -hmm. and they incorporated it within the existing restaurant. Mm -hmm. So the building is there within the restaurant. You can tell that it's a historic building because of the shape of the roofs. There's no other building that has the roofs. The issue is, would someone recognize this building if they went back 10 years? <laughs> so, yeah, so in other words, this whole front section, which is their outdoor seating basically, or, the, or their covered seating, that's all new? That's all from like the last decade? Mm -hmm. The front and the side along Curtis Street. Mm -hmm. Andrea, Andrea, this, yeah. Andrea, can you go where that little address box is? Can you click on the clock? Oh, go, clock. Yeah, there you go. There you yeah. Go. And it's going to bring up, go back, yeah, like, click click it, oh, there you go. And you can do yeah. those little dots and it'll show us a time lapse. Yeah. Oh, cool. So for this building, it's particularly helpful. Click yeah, on the, the full screen. screen that. I mean, I'll give you my opinion just as one guy, which is that you can still, yes, absolutely see the original structure. And it's abundantly clear that that whole front section is new. Um, yeah, I mean, it, they, they, you, you can see the effort to kind of keep with the theme, like the, the new windows kind of behave like a garage door, like a service station door. That's interesting. But I it's it's added on. Too. I mean, thematically, it makes sense. Even to be honest, I like the what they've done, and, and and it feels like the kind of thing that one should encourage. Um, Rick, yes, is this is this in the National Register District as a contributing or non-contributing building? It is not in the National Register District. Mm -mm, it's not. The National Register District ends. Um, ends on the other here. Side of Curtis. Yeah, okay. I I feel like from my National Register days, this would have been a non-contributing building in a National Register District. Because I, of I realize the changes. this is a local district. Um, I, I guess my concern is that it is so embedded mm -hmm. back in there that unless you're really looking for it, you don't know it's there. David and I both wrote this one, and then that's, that's why it's on the sheet. We both decided this was non-contributing. 
Um, so that's why we should have this discussion because there are people who say, well, yeah, you can still see the original parts of it, but then I, to me, it was non-contributing, but that's just, that's just my opinion. So, um, Brandon, do you want to weigh in? Do you have any thoughts? No, I'm still absorbing right now. As well, <laughs> you know? Um, uh, I mean, I see the original structure and then the additional additions are quite obvious as well. I do think it has historical significance to Littleton. You know, when I first moved here, they said this is the, one of the first service stations in the community. And so it does tell a story that should be captured. But as far as contributing, non, non-contributing, I'm Switzerland right now. I'm sorry. Well, we're all kind of that way. So yeah. uh, Amy, Amy, what do you think? Yeah, well, on, on the one hand, you you want to recognize and applaud the the owner's effort to keep some parts of the original building and mm-hmm. to thematically kind of be consistent with the original service station. Um, but in terms of you know all of our our criteria for evaluating integrity, no, I don't, it doesn't meet those criteria. So it's tricky because you, you want to honor, you know, right, the, right. the effort. But Okay, so Rick, what do you think? So what I did is I created a spreadsheet <laughs> with all the uh, integrity. <laughs> this is I so Rick. That. That's great. Okay, you know, here's my spreadsheet. Yes. Okay. Yeah, anyway, and that's what I'm working on. That's what I'm working off, Rick. It's the only way I could I could figure this out. And then this then I had the definitions in front of me. Mm. So there's seven levels of integrity, most of the buildings that I don't have a question with have more than three. All the buildings have location, all the buildings have setting, because they're all still there that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. But this building I put down that you really can't see the design based on the criteria that I read in the National Register 101. And I just read it very specific um, and, and it was really hard because you have to start memorizing this, but I also highlighted all the particular areas. And in this one here, you really cannot identify structural systems, technology, spatial organization, massing, proportion, scale, materials, or color because it's embedded within the existing building. Okay. And so uh, so uh, help me out with, uh, with a question. So I've, I've Totally prepared to go along with you guys. Uh, I have two questions. One, what happens to this slate that you're that you're proposing if we flunk one of them out? Two, uh, if the purpose of this is to provide some measure of protection to these buildings, are we essentially saying this building's not there anymore? Andrea, can you answer those? Well, yes, and. Um, you know, it's a little bit tricky because you may know we're in the process of rewriting the historic preservation code, but there are differences, big differences between contributors and non-contributors within the district. Contributors have much more strict rules to follow when the property owner wants to make modifications to the exterior. It needs to, uh, uh, the, the modifications need to be compatible with the historic character. And I think we've talked about, there's not a lot of historic character left here. Um, well, we don't know about that part, but there's a different issue here, so. Well, and then non-contributors um, could potentially be demolished. So we right. could potentially lose it, yep. Right, but non-contributing buildings within the district have to follow the design guidelines, mm-hmm. which are adopted. So when you, if you were to replace it or take it down. Chris? I, I'm playing both sides of the fence here. <laughs> um, I, I guess one thing I would say in favor of, you know, I, I think Jason had a good point um, in that regard, um, but in playing both sides of the fence, when you look at a building and, you know, there's, historic fabric that's still there. Um, It it is very obvious what are additions to the building. Um, And that is a a key component of, you know, when you do add on to a historic building that you don't create a false sense of history. And I think we talked about this when we looked at the the COA last week um, Mm -hmm. on, you know, Louthan Street that you can tell when there's an addition that's been made. It's not something that is 
it blends so seamlessly that it fools people into thinking it's always been there. And so in that regard, like we can tell what's been added to this building. Um, I feel like that large front gable um, that was added um, is, is kind of the only part that's kind of on the, you know, on the fence, um, mm -hmm. that blue section that kind of, you know, points out right there. Um, but for the most part, like we can tell what's been added to the building. Um, and, and I like what Jason said about like, are we gonna risk losing that historic kernel in there? Um, you know, maybe a, a future owner would wanna take off the additions and restore the gas station and make it into a cool, you know, little bar or coffee shop or, you know, breakfast place or something and buy us mm -hmm counting it as contributing, they would be eligible for tax credits and it wouldn't be threatened with demolition. Okay. I put this down as having feeling integrity. And I'll yeah. just, so here, the, the definition to have the aspect of feeling a candidate must have surviving physical features that express its historic character and help the visitor experience an awareness of its history and importance. The fact that this building had a 12, eight, uh, um, six and 12 pitch or greater, and it's the only building on the street with this kind of pitch in the roof, it is very distinctive. And you know that it was something created, you know it's been there for a long time. That's mm -hmm. what makes this one a little bit harder with the addition that's been added on. Rick. Okay. Rick. Chris. I, I just ahead, want to, I, I feel like I, I'm pointing at my screen and nobody can see me pointing at my screen. Um, so that that gable peak on the front, not a, not the side, but the front one. Is new, yeah. But on, um, the on the historic building, the one that's there, it's kind of above, yeah, where the, the, air, the little cursor mm -hmm. is right now. That's not what we're seeing when you look at the facade of the building now. It's much larger, right? That's that. right. Okay. So I, I, okay. Okay. That's All new. Right. Okay. So let's just go through each person and see if they would recommend to recommend this as contributing or non-contributing. So let's go, Rick, would you say contributing or non-contributing on this one? Well, I would say contributing because I, I can recognize that this is a historic building embedded. In okay. Okay, I'm just trying to get a consensus as, as, what, as to what we would recommend to the, the board. Paige, do you have an opinion recommending contributing or non-contributing? I was gonna say contributing, um, just cause I do think you can see the, the original building. Um, and I agree that, that the windows on the front do still kind of make it seem like it's a, a gas station or have kind of have that vibe while also okay. still knowing that that is not a part of the original structure. Okay, Brandon, contributing or non-contributing recommendation? Yeah, I would say contributing. Uh, I see the original bones of the of the structure still in place, and then I think that the story of being murals as well can can use that story to more the feeling feature of this historic designation. Okay. So I'd say contributing. Okay, thank you, Amy. With regret, I'll say non-contributing. Okay, because of the changes. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, Chris. You know, I, I was kind of leaning towards non-contributing at the outset, but I feel like the more we've talked about it, I'm I'm going to be okay with contributing. Okay. Jason? I'll be, I'll be okay, too. <laughs> we'll all be okay. Jason, uh, what do I, you think? I, the, the, the reason that I'm saying contributing is because I like the idea of creating an incentive for owners to do what, what they've done here and not demolish something before it's protected. So, you know, you, you want them to feel like, oh, I, I did this for a reason I was recognized and and that's that that to me that's a good thing to incentivize so, so but Jason I'd like to just bring up a point we can't make decisions based on what we think somebody might do to the building we right. have to focus on the building itself as it is because now because ownership's going to change a lot so yeah so that can't be part of the equation the, how about if I use the same the words and you understand them a different way? No, I, 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 the, 
Um, okay, contributing for no reason at all. Okay, thank you, Jason. That's right. You have you have your your opinion, and it's very valuable. Um, I would my opinion is that it would be non-contributing, but that's just my opinion. And out of the seven of us, five of us has recommended it be contributing. So we will. Go, does anybody have a problem with going forward as recommending this as a contributing building? No concerns. No concerns because I can't see all of you. So if you have a if you have a concern, yeah. Okay, so we're going to say that this is a contributing building for 2609. Re no, recommending it's contributing. Sorry, recommending it's a contributing building for 2609 West Main Street. And Jason, I just want to clarify. Um, I know exactly what you're saying, but when we get into a public hearing and owners of the buildings are in here, we can't make statements like that because then it's kind of we just can't do it. We have to focus strictly on the history and be real clear across the board. What is the purpose of public policy if not but to make public policy? I mean, what, what, I'm not trying to be stupid. I'm not trying to, no, no. The, the, I, I, I'm not trying, please understand. I'm not trying to be argumentative or ignorant. Um, but what is the purpose of public policy but to be public policy? Right. So, and, Andrea, you want to answer that? Or Ashley? I'll give it. I'll give it. I'll give it a try and then anyone else can jump in too. Yeah. So uh, for a historic district, the city needs to follow the regulations in the code. And in order to get a historic district designated, there are criteria. Right. And only those um, proposed districts that meet the criteria which are based on significance and integrity and patterns of development yeah. um, can, can actually meet it. So, so we're constrained by that. Yes, but I'm saying that I agree that we meet all of those criteria because that's what we've been discussing. But I'm, but I'm giving you personal reasons why. So, which is why I fall back on, all right. I believe that I can make my way logically through everything we've already discussed um uh and and that's i guess that's the end of it so well you know are you so um i mean i guess you could make an argument well let's change the criteria so that we can have a different kind of a, a district wherein no but i'm happy with because the I, i'm happy with what you guys said about integrity i guess i guess what i'm saying is i don't understand what the point of integrity is unless you want people to maintain integrity if you don't care about whether maintaining integrity is important, then what's the point of measuring it, right? Or wrong? I'm not, I, again, I'm not, <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, I guess maybe I would pipe up here and say, you know, this is where we look at the different aspects of integrity and this building is not gonna be the same as Penny Robin or, you know, any number of buildings we look at on Main Street and so, like Rick called out, you know, like this has, you know, out of the seven aspects, it might only have three. And yeah. whereas the building next door might have six out of the seven. Um, does it, you know. I, I understand. Okay, I, I listen, you know, I, I apologize for starting this conversation. I, I, I no, really, no, no, don't, I'm, no. I'm very much, very much, I, I'm ignorant of how this works. And I, I apologize because I, I feel like I've, I've walked into your house and messed it up. So, I'll, <laughs> so no. you're fine. You're just fine. Ashley, All right. do you want to say something, Ashley? I was probably just going to echo a lot of what Andrea said. I know, unfortunately for Jason, he's coming in in the middle of a ton of heavy lifting that this board has done. Um, and a lot of things that got to this point, we're kind of trying to establish the criteria. Um, but really what's happening in the background here, Jason, is this is where the board's advisory role is coming in. It's not necessarily policy making that will ultimately be up to council, but yeah. the role of all of this homework and all of these work groups that we've had to this point is really to pull the knowledge from HPB and your experience to make informed decisions to staff and recommendations to staff so they can put something together that will ultimately go in front of council in that policy and legislative making role um, yeah. when it comes to how we want to define the future code. And so it gets very piecemeal, but really it's a, your role right now is in an advisory capacity. And even when you're voting on what you think should be contributing or non-contributing would be based on the criteria that the board has come up with in this 
working study session. Right. I mean, I guess what study I'm saying sessions, is, not just today, yeah, but. But I'm not making it up when I say that I listen to those criteria and this is where I'm coming down. Sure. Yep. Um, and that's ultimately big picture what you have to base any potential future vote on rather than the individual property or property owner of what you want to see happen with it. You really just have to pull back to that criteria. And if you can do that, like Rick said, you're good. Right. Okay. And just Jason, a quick this reminder. Is very... Mike, oh, go ahead, Mike. I apologize. Just a quick reminder. Tonight, we are uh, yeah. stating whether we have concerns or not with including this right. as, a, um, as a contributing structure. Uh, it is not a vote, uh, but we will forward that to you. Uh, based on tonight's information, we will get that list for more of a formal vote. So I okay. apologize about the interruption. Okay. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. Rick, do you need to say something? I just want to say one more thing to Jason. Jason, this is very hard. We have two roles on this board. I've been doing this. I started in 1978. It is just extremely hard. But you need to ask these questions for us to discuss. That's, that's how we all learn. And that's how we're able then to set the sideboards so that we can move forward with a um, defensible decision when we, when we vote on the ultimate district and send it to the city council for approval. Mm -hmm. So it's good to have this discussion because it, you're not the only one that feels this way. There's probably 30,000 other people in Littleton like this. So yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 Okay, are we good to go to the next property? Yep. Okay, okay, we're at um, 2629 West Main Street. Um, it's now the Main Street Center. It was built in the 1950s. Um, and on our um, survey from this time, it was remodeled in 2004. It has a new contemporary cornice, it has removal of the vertical brick projection and has window enlargement. According to this survey, it has lost integrity and David and I mark this property as non-contributing. So let's, let's go ahead and discuss this one, um, what you all think about this property. Rick, do you want to start the discussion? Uh, I don't want to be the one to begin these discussions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, let's I, go to Amy. I'll go to Amy then. Oh, I'll just wait, make actually, one point. This property's opted into the district. I don't know if that opt in. changes things. Not as much as the COA changes it, but yes, it did opt into the district. Yeah. What was the address again? 2629 West Main Street. It's Main Street um, Center. And it was, was originally a supermarket. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm sorry, I didn't mention that. There was no COAs issued for any alterations to the structure. Um, it was identified as contribute. No, it wasn't, Never mind. sorry. So oh. according to the, the new survey, it is lost integrity. It's had significant remodeling in 2004. And like I said, David and I put this on the list because we both thought this was a non-contributing property. So, I agree with that. okay. So does anybody want to talk about what their thoughts or concerns are on this property, if they have any? Well, I, I mean, I, I agree based upon intuition and sight and being down there, it's non-contributing. But I'd love to hear, you know, more of the detail why you all thought it was non-contributing as you did further research. I, I actually reached a split decision on my worksheet for this property. Um, I, I, I don't think I think it has lost integrity for all the reasons, Laura, that you described. But it, it was built in the 1950s. It's got some mid-century elements that that I think we can recognize like the parking lot in front and the, the kind of low flat supermarket type shape building and the size of it, which was char common characteristic of a 1950s era supermarket. Okay. Um, Chris, do you have your hand up? I can, like I said, I can't see you. If I don't call on you, yell at me. I have it marked on my worksheet as no integrity and not contributing. And, um, I, you know, when I looked at it at, at the worksheet, I was like, Main Street Center, I, I thought that was a brand new building. Um, so then yeah. when I started comparing the pictures, I was like, oh my gosh, like they've changed all the window openings, they've changed the entrance, they, the tower that um, projects above the roof line has been greatly shortened. Um, I, I just feel like there's so many changes. Um, and 
you know, any one of those changes by itself, I might, you know, be kind of flexible with, but it's, I feel like it's kind of incremental. And so you have, you know, the tower shortened, the entrance changed, the windows um, altered, um, added. And so I just kind of, I got to a point where I felt like it had reached a threshold. And so I went with not contributing as my okay. personal opinion. Okay, Rick, do you want to, do you want to weigh in here? Um, I'm going with non-contributing. I think there's been too many architectural changes to this building. Um, I don't think it has the feeling of what it had before these changes were made. This is the only building that I put down that might have a, a significant association, mm. but only for a short period of time. Mm -hmm. That's because this, the Littleton Independent was in it. Right. But yeah, beyond that, um, okay. I feel that it's, even though you can recognize, it's got the Roman brick, one of the few buildings that have it, though we have some additional, we have some additions and modifications on Main Street using Roman brick. Mm -hmm. um, Jake's beer garden was one. I just feel that it's lost too much in this case because it, it doesn't have any major architectural distinctions except for that tower, which was removed. Okay. I have a okay. question for Rick. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Um, you mentioned the Littleton Independent being in this building. Are there any other buildings in downtown that um, were occupied by the Littleton Independent? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I can't for tell you the address. For a long of time? For most of its duration, yeah. Okay. So this probably isn't the best representative example of the Littleton Independent. No, the the other okay. building would be because it was built for the Littleton Independent. Okay, so then it's a, that it's association um, loses strength because yeah. we do have the building that was built for that specific purpose. And the other okay. building is listed as contributing in the National Register District and cited for the Littleton Independent as well. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Jason, would you like to weigh in? I agree with everybody. I think once they lost the tower, they lost the building. Okay. Chris, did you tell me you were non-contributing? You thought non-contributing? Yeah, I'm going to stick with that. Okay, Brandon, do you want to weigh in? Yeah, I agree, non-contributing. Okay, and Paige, what do you think, hon? I think also non-contributing. I think we uh, mentioned at the beginning, um, you know, would somebody from this time period recognize this building? And I think, yeah, without like the structure yeah. that goes kind of up and down. I mean, the shape, I guess, is the same, but I... I I don't know if people would recognize it. No. Okay. Okay. So I have everybody is recommending that this be um, sent um, to the board as a non contributing um, property. Does anybody have concerns with that recommendation? Nope. Okay. So we're going to do non contributing recommendation. Okay. All right. So the next property is 2630 West Main. This was originally the Macaulay Rankin Chevrolet. And it's now Main Street Cutters. Um, the other thing we should note is this property is connected to 5739 South Curtis Street. We talked about this the last board meeting, how it goes behind down the alley and then takes a, a, a leg to the left. Hmm. And um, those buildings are connected. I don't know if that'll make a difference in how you think if this is contributing or non-contributing, but um, those two buildings are connected. Um, on this building, it was built in 1910. There have been no material changes um, since 1997. And it was noted that the building is in poor condition and has no field integrity. So um, I had originally thought that this building was non-contributing, but when we talked about the building being connected to the other building, to me that made, made it more contributing. So you know, I kind of, I don't know that other building very well. So maybe Amy, could you weigh in a little bit and see what, what your thoughts are? Um, yeah, I, I actually did think it was contributing because of the mid-century modern features um, that it shows here. And um, it, it, it fits with the, the mid-century theme, the historical theme, excuse me, of this block. Okay. I don't consider this mid-century modern. Did I say modern? I meant mid-century features is what I had written. Sorry. Oh. Okay. 
So you, in your opinion, that you would recommend that this be a contributing building? Amy. Yes. Yes. Okay. Chris, do you have some thoughts? I have a couple different things. One is um, I'm surveying, I'm working on this, the survey form of the connecting building that's on Curtis Street. Uh-huh. Um, I guess I'm struggling with, with counting this as all being one building. Mm -hmm. um, because they have distinct architectural forms that right. are completely unrelated. Um, and I am looking at assigning a separate site number to that building on Curtis Street. I, I don't know if they just abut each other, if it's because they are owned by the same person. Um, I, I don't know if they just kind of got lumped together in the 1997 survey because of that. Um, I, I don't know. I'm kind of struggling with how to, to proceed with the survey form. Um, Would it be easier if we just said that it was just this building and we didn't talk about the 5739 South Curtis Street? I mean, I didn't yes. know they were connected until last meeting when someone said they were. Yeah. And it was like, okay, so maybe and we I, just focus on this building, not the connection. They yeah, have and two I, and I separate think addresses. Yeah. The, right. the Curtis, That's true. Curtis Street address, I, I think the reason, um, you know, if you look at it like from an aerial view, I, I think because that was kind of wedged in behind this block of buildings, that's how it ends up abutting. I don't know that if, if historically there's been, you know, a huge association or not. Um, I, I'm still doing some digging on the property to find out some more history on it. Um, okay. The, the other thing I would, I, I'm going to say about this building specifically is um, this is, I don't want to say identical, but I, clearly to me, the changes that happened to Penny Robin on the corner happened to this building at the same time. And so if we count Penny Robin as contributing, we kind of have to count this as contributing because it's, there's like three sections here. And yeah, the, I would think yeah, they would all Chris, be contributing. Chris, that, that was exactly my rationale. In, okay. <laughs> grouping these together yeah and the other thing that came out of the 97 survey was this would be associated with the history of automobile related businesses in Littleton yep. so that exactly. is a significant event so that in my opinion would make it contributing Rick your thoughts oh uh, Paige was going to say something oh I'm sorry Paige I didn't see you Go oh ahead. no that's okay I think I figured it out I was just trying to figure out where the other building was I was going to ask if it was Maha Soul but I think I, I figured out it is that it's building. the yoga okay. studio yep okay gotcha so thank a you point of, a point of information the buildings are connected but they were not built at the same time right the Ooh. second building was built as a result of a fire in the first building okay after the fire occurred in 1921 they added this addition to it um, and it was all automobile oriented so it makes sense that they would do that but the fire basically separates this into two separate buildings because it, it wasn't constructed at one time okay okay so rick in your opinion would you recommend this to be contributing or non-contributing yeah contributing okay Paige, what do you think i would say also contributing okay Brandon, you're up. Do you have any thoughts? Oh, did we lose Brandon? Okay. Okay, Jason. I have no thoughts. I'll defer to you guys on this one. Uh, I, okay. I, I was moved by the idea that it's identical to the other one that met the, the criteria, so I'm, so I'm fine with that. Okay. Sorry, and Laura. Brandon? Yeah, sorry, That's Laura. Okay. I didn't take a bathroom break. I need to abstain for this one. I just a steep warning curve and I'm not certain at this point in time. Okay, well, actually we have a majority of people that would recommend this building to be contributing. So if that's okay, we will go ahead and recommend this building to, um, as contributing to the board. Anybody have concerns on that? On that? Nope. Okay, okay, so, so yes. Okay, so let's go to the next one, which is the Kinkle residence. It's at 2699 West Main Street. It is now um, the genuine African braiding boutique. Um, let me see, where did that go? Can I start this one? Yes, you can. Let me finish telling. This one was built in 1890. Yeah, and um, there have been no material changes since 1997. 
uh, on the survey of 2020, it is said to have had lost, have no field integrity. And this is another one that David and I um, were concerned about and, and had said non-contributing. But I have to say that to me, um, this one uh, shows development of what Main Street sort of started out and has kind of developed over the years as a mm -hmm. thoroughfare through Littleton. So my original thoughts, you know, originally two months ago when we did this was this non-contributing and I've now changed my mind and, and I would think this is a contributing building, but that's, like I said, that's my opinion. So Chris, go ahead. So when I worked in the National Register program, um, my boss who um, Rick knew, um, created uh, a property type that has been adopted um, and it's used statewide now. And I think some other states have started using it as well. And it's called House with Commercial Edition. Mm -hmm. And this is a very typical um, evolution of a building and you'll see it all up and down Colfax mm -hmm. where you know, things started out as residential and then um, people tacked on a commercial um, addition on the front. Mm -hmm. Um, rather than the side or the rear. And so the, the building's kind of intact right behind it. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I, you know, when I looked at the survey form and the people who did this survey form are, are the cream of the crop in the state of Colorado. Mm -hmm. um, and they knew my, my boss too. And so I think if they were to look at this now, they would have a different opinion on the integrity assessment that they put on that form in 1997. And so I look at this as, you know, again, this is evolution of a building on Main Street. It happened during the period of significance. Um, it's historic in its own right. The glass block is indicative of the 1950s. Um, and so I have zero concerns about this. Um, and I would say it's a contributing resource to the district. Okay. Okay, Amy, what are your yes. thoughts? Yeah, I agree. And I, I have to say, I was working on writing the historic themes as I did this exercise. So that colored a lot of my, I'm realizing tonight, colored a lot of my <laughs> assessment. No surprise. Uh, and I absolutely agree with Chris. I, I, I kind of was a split decision on the integrity pieces, but I do think it's a contributing building for all the reasons that Chris listed. It's, it's a commercial add-on up front. Um, it's, it, it fits with the historic themes of its proximity to Santa Fe. Um, so yeah, I say yes. I recommend okay. It. Um, Jason. Yes, I agree. Contributing. Okay. Okay. Brandon, thoughts? I, I see the commercial add-on, so I would say contributing. Okay. Um, Paige, what do you think? Also agree, contributing. Okay, and Rick. Um, definitely, this is the only residential property remaining on Main Street. Mm. And in 1890, the historic commercial center of Littleton in 1890 was on Rapp Street at the Columbine Mill. And in the 1890s is when the, that commercial center moved from Rapp Street to Main Street. Hmm. Um, very interesting. And it adopted a 1950s mid-century modern approach as well, because uh, at this time, Littleton was expanding east up Littleton Boulevard as well. So yes, it's really important. Um, I it definitely, I agree. It's important too. So. Okay. It looks like we're all in agreement to recommend um, 2699 Westman Main Street as a contributing building. Any concerns? No, nope. I love this building. I love oh, going. Isn't that it. great? Yeah, <laughs> I love it too. It's my second okay. favorite building. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next one. It's twenty five sixteen dash thirty eight West Alamo Avenue. It was originally the Cromley White residence. Um, it's a boarding house. It was built in eighteen eighty nine. Let's see. On the survey that was done this fall. Um, it has, and since 1997, it's had material changes of scalloped shingles were added to the front gable. Clad Say that in address vinyl. again, please. I'm sorry. I, oh, I'm sorry. It's 2516-38 West Alamo Avenue. So okay. let me repeat. Um, since 1997, it's had scalloped shingles added to the front gable. 
It's been clad in vinyl siding. Um, it has surround, the surrounds on the windows have been removed and there's been a rear addition. Um, David and I um, decided that this would probably be a non-contributing um, building um, due to its significant loss of integrity. And, and that's probably how I would still recommend that this would be a non-contributing. Um, any thoughts, Rick? Um, yes. I, the, of all these buildings, there's only two that had six of the seven um, integrity statements or that, uh, that I felt over here. Um, when I went back and looked at it, one, it's one of the oldest buildings in Littleton again. It's an early residence when Rapp Street was a residential street and it turned to commercial. But as I did more reading on the inventory forms, the survey forms identify this as one of the few buildings that still retain a lot of historic features. And they um, do, we, it. do we have a picture of it um, right now, Andrea? A current picture? <clears throat> Sorry, Rick, I didn't mean to interrupt. I thought it'd be oh, that's okay. wise to show the front of it now. Yeah, I'd like to see a current picture. Yeah. I walked by this the other day and I'm, I've been changing my opinion on this. <laughs> yeah, this so is I, a hard one. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Andrea. Oh. Okay, I, so, so go ahead, Rick. So basically what the survey form stated was that and they only made the statement a couple of times in all the survey forms for the downtown. But uh, they stated that this building team auto, auto order, uh, altered represents early 20th century dwelling construction through its gable roof, with overhanging eaves, drop siding, one and a half, one over one light double hung sash windows with architrave surrounds. And when Lori and Tom did the surveys, they very rarely made that statement on their mm -hmm. survey forms. But, but so, that was in 97, correct? That was 97. Okay. So it looks better now because they removed some of the siding. <laughs> but, but Rick, here's the thing. They talk about multi, you know, like it's usually like the three or four over one windows. Prominent porch with tapered supports, overhanging eaves and exposed rafters. And all that's gone. Like they, that's there? been removed since 97. Right. Oh, that, let's see. I mean, there's there's like Victorian shingles on, you know, let's go back. shingles oh, on wait, the I got the 97 picture. Um, no, I got, I from 97. Yes, I would count that as contributing, but the way it looks now, like they've really, I mean, the 97 picture, oh, wait, hold on. Yeah. Um, it, I, it, you don't see the architrave surrounds. Those have been removed. There's no three over one, win, or four over one windows. They've added gallop, you know, like fish scale shingles, which are Victorian. Well, I mean, the form is still there. There's no tapered porch supports. Well, what's the date of construction on this one? 1889. Because hmm. those kind of things, like the three over one windows and the tapered porch supports are like 1900 to 1920s. Those are, that's bungalow craftsman influence. So that well, tells me there was an earlier building that was modified in like the teens or 20s to update it and make it look more modern. And so it, it got craftsman um, elements applied to it. And then somebody has removed those craftsman elements and made it look like what it looks like today. Interesting. I don't see that, Chris, when I go back to today's picture. Okay, so Rick, your recommendation would be contributing on this property. Yeah, mine is going to be contributing because um, of what Tom and Laurie said, and uh, that it's one of the oldest structures on Rap Street as well. Okay. Okay. Um, Amy. Ugh, so I think like a historian, <laughs> not an architect, and I said yes um, okay. for for the historical reasons. Um, not uh, tonight listening to Chris explain like here are the craftsman elements that were likely added on 
um, I'm, I'm wavering, but, but I'm going to stick with my um, recommendation to, to vote, to say, yes, um, this is contributing based mainly on the purpose of the building and the date that was built. Okay, great. All right. Um, Chris. Okay. I was looking at the wrong building, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm under, but, but I am going to say in my defense, um, I am looking at the proper page now and it says architrave surrounds and those have been removed. Yes. Um, and they have added fish scale shingles, which are Victorian. Um, they were not on the building in the um, in the 1997 photo. But we um, don't know if they were there earlier or not. Right. No. Probably not, but you know. Um, yeah. I, I walked by this building the other day because I want I needed to look at other buildings that were on this chart that I couldn't find anywhere in the survey report. Um, The form is still there and the age um, of construction is what's making me sway. So I guess um, I, I guess I could be persuaded to be okay with contributing. Okay. Okay. Brandon. I didn't want you to call on me, Laura. I feel like I'm I'm sorry. Sorry. Well, like are you smarter than a fifth grader? You know, because I'm, <laughs> I'm on I'm on the learning curve right now, you know. Are you, are you feeling overwhelmed? Because no, I've been on no, the board no, three I'm years. Feeling the, the healthy gap of my learning curve right now. That's what I'm feeling. I was going to say, I've been on the board a while and I still feel, you know, okay. exactly okay. that way. Yeah, it's I like, feel, so don't, don't don't I feel a lot of healthy shame right now. Don't. Um, so. but, but look at how yeah. all of us have struggled with this. I mean, you know, like some of us have 20, 30 years in preservation and we're still like, eh, you know, yes and no. So don't feel yeah. intimidated you know, by that. hard. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But going going on on gut intuition, seeing the the picture from ninety seven, I do think it is contributing. It's holding okay. the, the, the structure previously. Okay, thank you. Hey, Jason, what do you think? Well, first of all, I want to thank uh, Chris for the. I, I just feel like I'm learning so much. I feel like I'm in a seminar, uh, <laughs> and it's great. I I I, I truly, um, my gut says yes, contributing. Uh, you know, but that's that's just working off of of cribbing off of you guys' notes, um, but. But yeah. that's how you learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. And talk about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I second what Jason said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Paige, your thoughts? Yeah, I was, again, thank you guys for all of this information. I feel like I, I'm also learning a whole lot. Um, I think the only thing that I noticed, and I wish the um, thing from, 19, the picture from 1997 showed the side, I'm yeah. wondering like how much actually was added on to the back of the building. And from wow. looking at it from this side angle, it looks like like the way the siding is that it's like one continuous structure and it looks like it could have been that way. I know it's not because I know it's additions, but I think we've talked about, you know, additions should look different than the structure, the original structure. The so that would be that way on this one. Okay. And that's why it probably looks so seamless right now. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. So yeah, that was the only thing that I was kind of thinking as you guys were talking, but um, I think looking at the front of the house and the age of the building, um, I would agree contributing. Okay. So um, I'm going to go ahead and write down that the board, that this group recommends that 2516 Alamo be um, recommended to be a contributing property. Anybody have concerns with that? Nope. Okay. So the next property we're going to look at is 2626 West Alamo yeah. Avenue. And this is the one Chris was talking about and didn't realize it. Um, this is built in 1920. And since 1997, it has been totally remodeled in 2006. It's had added window openings. It has an enclosed porch was removed. Siding glass doors were added. Siding was replaced. Windows were replaced. New porch was added and a large rear addition with exterior stairwell was added. Um, David and I both thought that it had a significant loss of integrity and, and wrote down this is a non-contributing um, property. Um, to me, it's, it's unrecognizable um, as, as an older property due to the changes. Um, so I would, I would say this is a non-contributing property in my opinion. Amy, what do you think? I agree with you for exactly those reasons. Okay. Um, Chris? 
Agreed. I, I, I mean, I, Rick and I are the ones who surveyed it and it was just like, how many changes can you list? Like there's not enough room on the paper to list all the changes to the building. So, right. Um, and and I think it behooves to just show the new board members, the old picture yes. and the new picture, um, because 26. really, yeah, um, that's at 2626 um, West Alamo. This is the craftsman I'm talking about. Right. The exposed rafters that you see um, on that roof eave. And then the um, the multi light over the single light um, on either side, and then those porch supports, how they get wider as you go towards the base. Um, all of yeah, those are, all lost. are typical craftsman elements. Um, this was built in what year? 1920s. It was so built yeah, in 1920s. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's yeah. the law building, right? Yeah, they've moved all the window openings and added windows and. All so if you of. just go back to that that simplified um, definition I gave you guys all at the beginning from the National Register, if you were alive in 1920 and, and lived in this building and came back, I'm pretty sure you wouldn't recognize the new one. Um, I mean, it's to me, it's non-contributing. So, and Amy, your thoughts? You said non-contributing? Correct, non-contributing. Okay, Paige, what do you think, huh? I really like the old building. I wish it was still in its original structure. It's really cool I looking. Right. Um, I, I think um, in its current state, I would agree non-contributing. Okay, Jason? I agree. Okay, um, Brandon? Yeah, I agree that the entrance, um, a big kind of um, totally absorbs the building. So yes, non-contributing. Okay. okay, Rick? I cried when I saw this project <laughs> happen. They to so totally changed the building. They moved every opening around everything. It's definitely non-contributing. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to write down that this group recommends that 2626 West Alamo Avenue be considered as a non-contributing building. Does anybody have any concerns with that? No. Okay. Um, the next property we're going to look at is 5708. South Rapp Street. Um, there's no historic name given to this property and it's now uh, being used by Infinity Restoration. Um, let's see, I gotta find my sheet. Sorry, I what is it? So this was built in 1976. Right, and um, a month ago when we worked on this, Andrea, we had talked about going up to 1980 as our period of significance. And um, so this one would have been considered, but since it's now up to 1970, this property would be non-contributing because it was built in 1976. Mm. Mm. Is that correct, Andrea? Is she there? Oh, you're on mute, I'm sorry. Andrea, you're on mute. Okay, sorry about that. I was. Um concentrating on trying to find my way around the <laughs> website here. You were driving here. us. <laughs> yeah. So what like was I the said, question? So back when David and I, and, and you worked on this, um, we had talked about the period of significance going to 1980. And now the period of significance has shrunk down to 1970. So this building was built in 1976. So just due to that fact, it would be non-contributing because it's not in the purity of significance. We wouldn't even consider it. Is that correct? I would agree with that, but we may have different opinions here. I do. Okay. Um, Rick, what do you think? Well, Chris, Chris is very anxious and then I'll go. No, no, you can oh, go, I'm Rick. Sorry, I, could, I can only see four people at a time. I keep moving everybody oh, no, back fine. and forth. Okay, Chris, <laughs> go ahead. I, my recommendation would be since we look at properties 40 years of age and older, and we are dealing with a commercial downtown district, um, with National Register, you know, 50 years is, is kind of the guideline. And so it, it's always kind of an arbitrary end date for, you know, when you do like a commercial district. And so my recommendation would be that we end the period of significance in 1981, because that's 40 years back. Mm -hmm. And then we pick up some of these 70s buildings. Yeah because they are an important part of the evolution of downtown. Um, so is that an old picture we're looking at right there? The, no, that's current. This I is current. 
That's okay, not- but I don't I don't think we can change the period of significance I, I, at this point. I think. But that's not like, it. Just so that we're understanding, right? That's not the building, correct? Right. The that's the building. I that's thought you said the, the one that infinity yeah. restoration is used. That's it. Yeah, that's yeah. it. I think what the date's wrong. Really? What am I? I apologize. I, apo- I thought that. The that's the, that's the building. There. That's the front. Right. Right here. Okay. Yep. This is the wrap street. Oh, side. I see. I apologize. You were turning. Okay. You're around the side. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but but I, here's the thing. 1970 is just a recommendation in and of itself because there is no period of significance for the local landmark district. Mm-hmm. But that was the recommendation period of significance that we were now given. Do we, do we have a picture of when it was built? Like what it looked like? Well, trying to, it was a gas station, right? I'm, I'm just curious if it looks like, going by your time traveler rule, like if, if somebody, <laughs> With some, it looks almost identical to me, I think. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. But I would my, question, my question oh. here, though, is that we wouldn't even be considering this building for contributing or non-contributing because it's outside the period of significance. Yeah. So at, for tonight's discussion, we have 1870 to 1970. This building was built in 76. So okay. we shouldn't even be considering this building. I mean, this building wouldn't be on the list was only on the list because earlier we talked about the period of significance going to 1980. So mm. I don't even know if we can discuss contributing or non-contributing because it doesn't fall within the period of significance we've been given for this. But this. My, my question is, is my understanding is there is no period of significance for the current downtown mm. district and that we are if we feel it's warranted that we could recommend that the period of significance go to 1980 or to, to whatever date we feel is, I mean, let's just say downtown died in 1974, then we could arbitrate, you know, that would be our date. Um, but at this point, I guess, who decided 1870 to 1970? Andrea, yeah. can you answer that? <clears throat> Yeah, so that date was, that was the period of significance that was identified by our consultant, Nori Winter, when he was hired to come and do the downtown design standards in in downtown Littleton. So that I felt that that was a starting point. A starting point. So it is a flexible date that if we feel we want to bring it up to 1980 or 81, since, you know, Want to pick you know 40 years back then we pick up things you know i mean 1970 is 50 years old yeah. <laughs> well, i'm not i'm not a, i'm not trying to argue with you i'm just saying that for, right for, the, for this discussion i don't know how to proceed on this building since our period of significance ends in 1970 how do we proceed to discuss I, this building? i think we have to discuss it and then we have to come bring it back at a future point and we're under a time crunch when you know we're kind of already talking about contributing and non-contributing, this is going to be within the boundary kind of thing. Yeah. Could can Amy, I just make one quick yeah one right. quick point about this particular building that might or might not help our thinking? So what what I like about this building is it feels like it's of a piece with the with the Penny Robin building that we had talked about earlier. Even though they were built at a different time, um, I think they both represent this building in particular, a, a commercial enter a commercial function of downtown when downtown was like a working downtown and not just retail just restaurants that that you know there were hardware stores and printers and shoe shops and electrical buildings and and different types of commercial Mm -hmm. enterprise that that evolved that changed um as we got into the 1980s and later okay can i say something Go the, ahead. Date, the date is wrong on construction. Oh, when is it? It was there was a gas station constructed here in 1953. Okay, because I have 1976. That's what the form says, but when you read the description, there was a gas station on this site. And what they what they cited was the county assessor noted that there was a uh, construction of a building built here. 
It doesn't mean okay. it was a new building. It may have been the addition. Okay. Well, then we do we do have a historical photo of that gas station. It was I believe quite different. Now I I have heard from the property owner that there are elements of that gas station on the interior. There are. I looked at the building. I saw them. Yes. Okay. So can uh, can we go forward and say that we are going to look at this property even though it's outside the period of significance? and yeah. decide what and recommend whether it's contributing or non-contributing. Is that okay with everyone? If we go ahead and look at the property? Chris, go ahead. I say yes. I have a question for Amy. Yes. Um, you connected this with Penny Robbins. You remember the Penny Robbins building with that kind of, this is mm -hmm. called a Neo Mansard roof because okay. The, man, the, the original mansard roof is like 1860s, 70s. Um, sure. Mm -hmm. They kind of recreated it um, and it's wood shingled and you know it right. really has a, a different vibe to it than the yeah, original. Yeah, it's a, you know, a mid-century thing. Oh, yeah. um, the Penny Robbins building. So you remember it looking like that in the 70s, you said? Mm -hmm. Yes. So I, my question then is, I, I'm kind of wondering if, there was an original gas station here, like Rick said, in the 50s. And then the way they modernized this building was in the 70s, hence the 76 date. And the assessor does this a lot, especially in Denver, um, is when there's a major remodel, they latch onto that date and they kind of discard yeah, the date. They, that, that's exactly what I was thinking so, too. Yeah, okay. so my guess yeah. would be that this is when this was updated was 1976. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so. that, that's, that's my hunch also. Okay. So that would okay, make so, mm -hmm. so based on what we have now, we're going to go ahead and decide if it's contributing or recommend if it's contributing or non-contributing. Rick, do you want to give us a, what your thoughts are? Um, contributing. Okay. How about you, Paige? Contributing also. Okay. Amy? Yes, contributing. Okay. Brandon? Contributing, even though I do not like 1970s architecture or remodel. <laughs> It's historic <laughs> now. Yeah. Nobody we have likes to learn it. to embrace it. Yes. Okay. All right, Jason. Yes, contributing. Chris. Yes, contributing. Okay, and I do contributing. So, okay, we will write that. We're going to recommend. Um, where is it? Fifty-seven zero eight South Rapp Street to as a contributing property, even though the date on the survey is outside our period of significance. So I'll make a note of that. Is our, that okay with everyone? our suggested period of significance. That's up for, for discussion, I would okay. say. Okay, is that okay if we do that, Andrea? Well, I wouldn't say it's outside the period of significance. I would say that the inventory form date is wrong. The original right. date was 1950s. And, what, and like what Amy was here, so Littleton at that time, of course, was trying to revise their downtown. They went to this Western theme with shingles on the front of buildings, which have all been removed. Uh, mm -hmm. This probably would fit into that theme that was occurring at that time. Okay. Okay. So if, does anyone have concerns about recommending this building as being contributed? No, no concerns. No. Okay. All right. Let me find the next one on the... It is 5784 Alamo Avenue, the Columbine Warehouse. It's still used as a warehouse. Um, I gotta find it Can in my sheet. Question? Yeah, go ahead. Can I ask a question, Laura? Yeah, go ahead. How did this end up getting included in this chart? Because Rick and I didn't survey this as part of the resurvey of downtown, and it's kind of off the beaten path. So I, I had to walk down there to find it because I couldn't find it on Google. To tell you the truth, I don't and remember. We don't have a form for it. I, I think okay. I don't remember how this ended up on here. To tell you the truth, um, I don't think there's a survey form, Andrea. There is a survey form. There is. Yeah. See, right there. Yeah, there is. I'm looking at it. Isn't that a beautiful I building? Have it in my book, not. No, it wasn't in the book. It was left out of the book. I copied it off afterwards from the website. Oh. Okay. Is it the apartment building? No, it's just, it's, it's a metal it's a, shed kind of building. 
I apologize. I, I, I can't find it. Metal enclosed. It's not going to be. Uh, yeah, I it, I couldn't find it on Google either. I had to go. If you go to the there. mill, you might have more luck finding it. I mean, yeah. it's really, it, it looks basically original and it's kind of a nondescript building. It's a warehouse. Yeah, it's a warehouse. Associated with the mill from the 1920s. I, right. I just can tie it to the downtown is, I guess, how I was. It's, of, it's on one of the side streets, and I think that's why the address was pulled up, but I don't remember exactly why. But knowing that, um, Rick, would you say this is, would you recommend this to be contributing or non-contributing? Go down the alley, Andrew, uh, where that non contributing. Non contributing, Rick? The, the survey form says that the modifications have diminished its character. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Paige, what do you think? I don't know. It's kind of hard to say without it's right seeing it. There in the back. You can <laughs> see it in the back there. Okay. That little tiny white yeah, little. thing back there. No, it's and not Rick, the white one. It's no, no, it's not that one. It's no, it's not that one. It's right there. You can see it, the yellow, the little yellow part. You get real close. Oh. Where those cars are parked. <laughs> I just had to drive down there. I couldn't find it here. See that little oh, yellow building? Okay. Oh, right. oh. Yeah. Okay. Is it like right back behind where the parking for the view house is? Yes. Is it like back there? Yeah, okay. and I actually, I actually years ago, know it. About five years ago, it was an antique shop called the Pink Attic Cat for a while. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess it's the, um, it, when you guys were looking at it and found that it had um, significant changes, then I, I guess non-contributing, if I okay. had to say. Okay. Amy, your thoughts? Non-contributing. Okay. Brandon, your thoughts? Yeah, non-contributing. Okay, Chris, what do you think? I don't understand how it ties into the commercial history of the downtown. And so I would say non-contributing because I just, I don't see a connection there. Yeah. I, I think it supported the mill and- uh, Yeah, I think that's it, yeah. Okay, Jason, your thoughts? Non-contributing. Okay, so it looks like everybody would recommend this building to be um, recommended as a non-contributing building. Anybody have concerns with that? Nope. Okay. So By the way, that... you, I, I don't want to make an argument for this building, but I was able to kind of tool around and found a really good, it's the place where there is now the pink alley cat, right? Is that? It was the pink alley, it was the okay. pink alley cat. Well, there's a really good shot of that in the Google street maps if you sort of play doom around the corner of the I, I think yeah i think you need to go a little bit north like where the um urban sophisticat is and kind of go on that left side of the building yeah click into that uh yeah, yeah there, there it is oh that, yeah that golden building yep mm -hmm. it's actually I mean, kind of a cool building but um no it, it, yeah it is well, if you look at it, you can see it's got the uh, the metal siding on it that matches the Columbine Mill. Mm -hmm. It was built to support the Columbine Mill. It's built about the same time. Okay. My so now that everybody school. can now that everybody can see that picture, does anybody have a change of heart? No, but <laughs> my thing would be is to lump that in with the Columbine Mill. And to me, yeah. it's connected with the mill. And so if we're going to yeah. landmark the mill or do some kind of recognition of the mill it's connected with that history but not necessarily the downtown district history can, can we can do we, that if, if we can do that I, I agree can we do that Andrea you're muted honey is the mill landmarked yes so could we just extend the, the boundary to include that so uh we could take a look at that okay 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 owner, so the owner may be against it, but uh, yeah. yeah, we can take a look. Okay. So at this point, that's the end of all the properties we were going to talk about. So let me let, no, no, there's no. more. There's <laughs> Don't more. get real excited, Jason. We got more to go. Um, right. So let's, just for review, I will tell you what the, this is what come, is coming out of this meeting. This is the recommendations that we're going to do. We are going to recommend that 2530 West Main Street be um, a contributing property. 
2600 West Main Street, the Harry Post building is a, we recommend it as a contributing property. 2609 Main Street, um, we would recommend as a contributing property. Um, I just skipped a page. 2629 West Main Street would be recommended as a non-contributing property. Anybody have concerns with that? That's okay. Okay. 2630 West Main Street, the Macaulay Rankin Chevrolet um, would be uh, recommended as a contributing property. The Kinkle residence at 2699 West Main Street would be recommended as a contributing property. 2516 West Alamo Avenue, the Cromley White residence would be recommended as a contributing property. 2626 West Alamo Avenue would be recommended as a non-contributing property. Everybody okay with that? Yep. Okay. 5708 South Rapp Street would be recommended as a contributing property. And finally, 5784 West Alamo Avenue would be recommended as a non-contributing property. Everybody okay with that? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. those, does anybody, anybody have anything to say? Don't we have five more to look at? Five more buildings. Oh, I got more, but you had to turn the page. Sorry. Okay. I was like, I looked at five more. Did I miss something? No, uh, no, no. Okay. okay. Um, you know what? I think we missed one. We missed one. We have to go back and do one more. Sorry, I missed one. Um, no, there's five more. Yeah, five more. Five, five more buildings. Properties. I've got, okay. 2700 West Bowles Avenue, the Littleton Inco service station. Uh huh. And then oh, we, we've, we've got, got yeah, we've got, got 5794 five, South Wrap. Okay. Which is actually 5797 is yes. the address yes. building because I couldn't find it. I know it's on the other side of the street. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I skipped a page. So we do have a few more to um, review. Sorry, Jason. <laughs> okay, so 5797 South Wrap Street is the blacksmith shop, which is now Paget Accounting. And I got all excited there, you guys. Um, so this is another one that I'm kind of like, why are we looking at this? It's like so far down Rapp Street. But then Rick mentioned that the commercial center was kind of on Rapp Street. So now I'm like, oh, there's some other buildings we didn't look at, like where the Urban Sophisticat is and the one that's connected to it. Um, when, when we get to historical themes, we'll talk a little bit about that and where, like how the center shifted. Yeah. But, okay. So I looked at this and I'm like, why am I looking at this? I'm kind of confused. Um, so this well, one was built in 1920. It has had no structural changes or material changes since 1997. And on the integrity survey, um, it was listed as losing integrity. Andrea, do you have the... I don't have this survey form, so I was like, I don't have anything to compare it with. Yeah, uh, let me I have find a this photo that I took on my phone. Let's see. It looks like the siding's been changed. It's got aluminum siding oh, on it, it now, or vinyl. It's, I think it's uh, wood. The same. It's wood. It's wood. It's wood. It looks dented like aluminum siding. Yeah, probably hail. Yeah, yeah I think it's the Very same classic. siding that's in the survey, though. Yeah. It looks very cheap. Um, this is maybe a silly question. Sorry. Um, do we ever no, look at like land landscaping around the buildings, or is it truly just like the structure of the building? Landscaping. Okay. Good to know. Okay. So, Rick, do you want to throw in some thoughts on contributing or non-contributing on this property? I feel it's probably non-contributing. The facade's been on there a very long time. Um, but I just think it's just changed too much in its location. Okay. Okay. Um, Amy? I actually had it contributing, but I, I only had the survey photo to compare it to. Okay. I don't have the survey photo. <laughs> like, I don't know what it looked like, 20, you know, in 97. I only have exactly the card. It's the same. It uh, let, the same. Let, let, me sh let me share. Thank yeah, you. We're not, we're not seeing the thing anymore. Yeah, good. Okay, so it looks the same now as it did in, in 97. In 97. I have a, yeah. a current picture um, and it looks absolutely, um, except that 
the siding looks kind of dented and, and bent. Um, so Amy, you would say still contributing? Yeah, I mean, mean that, yeah, and, and the, the reason I, I said that is that it, it was originally a blacksmith shop, right? And so to me, the false front kind of communicated that very old, you know, early agriculture days of Littleton use of the building. Okay. Okay. So functional and utilitarian. Okay, Chris, your thoughts. <laughs> ah, um, <laughs> wow. There's no wrong answer. Remember that. There's no wrong I, I answer. Just wish I like I. I know there are other Werley blacksmith buildings. Like there's one on Curtis across from the yoga studio. Does it have the false front though? No, no he moved that. around. Yeah, oh, wow. that's why I'm like, is this the best yeah. building to represent Worley and his blacksmith enterprise? Hmm. I just, I feel like I don't know enough about it to. Yeah. The only blacksmith shop I've ever seen is the one at the museum, so I don't know either. <laughs> Chris, I think Worley was a very poor business person based on reading <laughs> about him. He moved all over Littleton. Uh -huh. So he moved around a lot. Okay, Chris, your thoughts contributing? Really? Not going to be. Our blacksmith was terrible. <laughs> um, do you want me to come back to you? I'm just, I'm going to say non-contributing. Okay. Okay, but Jason. I'm not, I'm not glued to that decision. Okay. I, I, I'm, I, I don't, I have no idea what I'm talking about here. So just I'm, give us your gut thought, your gut instinct. I'd say non-contributing. I, I I don't think there's anything here that that says now. I I understand the history of Littleton architecture more. You know, it, it doesn't do that. Okay, um, Brandon. Yeah, same thing. Gut says non-contributing, but that's not all I can give you at this moment in time. Okay, and Paige. Um. <laughs> It's, no it's okay. Yeah. Um, I not non, I guess. <laughs> okay. Well, even for those of you that are waving, Chris, go ahead. I was gonna say, when I worked in the National Register program and we would like do determinations of eligibility, every so often we would do one when we we would check the box that said need need more information. Like we didn't want to say no, but we weren't ready to say yes. We just didn't feel like we had enough information to make an informed decision. And I, I think that's I, I feel like that's where a lot of us are with this. Like, um, <laughs> um, on the like 1997 sheet, it does say um, this building does not appear on the 1921 Sanborn fire insurance map, but is shown on the 1932 map. This is not consistent with the 1916 date of construction reported by the assessor and another source. Oh, I missed that. That's a good. So, question. yeah. So, like, I guess I would want more mm -hmm. information, and you know, mm -hmm. I would want a little more historical background um, mm -hmm. before I totally okay, well, strike it off the list. Um, Andrea, could we leave this property to be discussed at the next meeting or do you want all properties, a recommendation on all of them tonight? Well, uh, if, if the board cannot make a, a recommendation, then then it, I think you have to leave it as undecided at this point. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, we're, okay, if we're split um, on it. Then. Okay, would everybody be all right if we recommended that we come back to this property next month? Mm -hmm. Chris, Chris, go ahead. Yeah, there's a photograph of it in the museum. We have to get a hold of that photograph. I was going to say, is, is there somebody who would be willing to maybe do a little research and see if they could uncover anything? I, I can do that. I'm happy okay. to do it. Thank you. I think I can that try would to help start. us make a better decision. Okay, so I'll let's... Let's say that we're gonna recommend that Amy research this property a little further and we come back to this in May. Is that all right with you, Andrea? Okay, okay, okay. Now our last page, Jason, you ready? Okay, <laughs> the next property is 2700 West Bowles Avenue, the Littleton Inco service station where Sushi Basho is at the moment. Um, on our survey, this property was built in the 60s. Um, it has since 1997, it has glass enclosed patio added to the front of the sushi restaurant, has a built-in planner and vertical siding added. And according to the survey, um, 
it had lost field integrity and David and I both said that this was a non-contributing property. Um, what, are, what are your views? Amy, what do you think? Uh, I, although, I had, oh, I'm sorry. I'll say, although I had non-contributing on one form and I have contributing on the other form. So I don't really yeah. know on this one at the moment. I know, I, 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 I think we're, as, as I got to the end of the list, it got harder and harder. It's supposed to be the opposite, right? So okay. the, I, I really was on the fence with this one. Um, the, I, I'm gonna say no. Okay, Amy, no. Um, I'm down as a non-contributing. Um, Jason, your thoughts? Uh, bring it up again, I'm sorry. It is um, 2700 West Bulls Avenue. It's where Sushi Basho is. Okay. At the corner of Bulls and Santa Fe. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to waste your time. Um, um, you're not. Don't worry about it. It used to be the uh, breakfast place. What was that called? Yeah, toast. 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 Before toast. they moved, it was toast. Huh. Toast is the, is the east side of the building. Sushi Basho is the one on the we're the back of the building it's back it's back. and it's it's yeah. just that back part right right oh, right yeah. okay and I, you know I, I i'm sorry can i jump in again please so yeah. having talked about the old littleton electric building and the chris help me out with what the that roof the is called Neo mansard yeah yeah i mean it's it's the same ugh. so we're yeah. only looking at sushi who's the sushi basho and not the re like to me it's all connected and it's They're one, all building. one building i view it as one yeah. building not two buildings mm -hmm. okay yeah yeah so amy you're still non-contributing you thought it really has changed a lot mm -hmm. okay, well can i throw something out that go right ahead chris yeah help okay. me out please i'm looking at this the picture you know of it from 1997 and it has wasn't this originally a service station Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Yeah. and co service station. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was created with a neo mansard roof. Um, it does. If we, if we have a period of significance that comes up to 1981, then the changes that are made to it are in the period of significance. And so then we could, you know, then those changes are kind of significant in their own right. I, I, I lament the fact that that service station corner with the, all the, you know, divided light glass um, is gone. I don't know if it's just yeah. enclosed um, by siding and is hidden underneath there. Um, but, you know, every building is potentially restorable if you throw enough money at it. Um, and so we can't base our decision on, you know, what might be underneath that siding. Um, so I, I, I kind of go back and forth with this one, but I feel like if, if we had a period of significance that came up to 80 or 81, um, then I could be, you know, I, I could see it being a contributing building because those changes were made during the period of significance. It shows that how a building, you know, was altered for a new use as a restaurant versus a service station. Mm. Okay. Um, yeah. Rick, what do you think? And it does have that Neo Mansard that ties into- Right, other right, from the 60s or whatever. Yes. You know, when I look at this, where this says City Deli, that's Sushi Basho, but the rest of the building back behind there is also part of it. It's all connected. Okay. I just uh, feel that when they taken did taken from like Santa Fe corner. This is from the Santa Fe corner, that picture. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. See, that's the problem then. Yeah. Yeah, because so, when they did toast, they they made a big addition to or they modified that building, if I remember. Quite a bit. Quite yeah. a bit. Right? Yeah. So ask yourself the original question if you were, you know, to to step back <laughs> in time. The time machine and would you recognize it? Yeah, and the, I, I and I, I agree with you, Rick. Those windows on this on the west side, those little Oreo windows. Yeah, the windows, the greenhouse yeah. kind of. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with yeah. my non recommendation. Okay, I'm gonna go with non contributing. Okay, Rick. Non contributing. Okay, Paige. I agree. Also non contributing. Okay, Brandon. Non contributing. And Jason. 
Yeah, none, please. Okay, so we will recommend that this building be non-contributing. Um, non Everybody okay with that? Okay. Yes. Rick, okay. thank you for pointing out that view. I was on a different- Yeah, that was a hard to look at. It. it totally changed. Yes. I look at that building now. <laughs> okay, the next building is 5776 uh, five, South Rapp Street. Um, it has no historic name. Um, but it's called the Mystic Escape Room at the moment. Um, da, 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 this one is built, oh, now I've lost it. Um, 1931. Oh. Yeah, 1931. Um, since 1977, it's had siding added on the front gable, new shutters, wood columns, and wrought iron railing on the front porch. Um, in, the, in the integrity survey in, in 2020, um, field integrity, they said it had no field integrity, but David and I both thought that this should be a contributing um, building. Now, um, so th that was one that we thought we could really have a good discussion on. Rick, do you have anything to say on this one? Yeah, the um, surveyors identify it, it as reflecting early 20th century residential architecture. Mm -hmm. and they thought right. it had enough integrity at that time to be because um, you can see the shapes and stuff. And what's interesting about this building, it has a window that came from the building on the corner. <laughs> when mm -hmm. they did some modifications, they moved it on here. It's in the back. But I feel that it has um, five of the seven integrity statements. So. Okay. Okay. Um, Paige, your thoughts? Sorry, I'm like reading the survey and everything. Do you want me to come back to you? Um, yeah, if, if you could, thank you. Okay, how about Jason? <laughs> I, I, for, I know we're not supposed to be overly moved by our own op opinions, but I love this building. And so, and yes, I, I, I think it looks, I think it looks like, like what I associate with early 20th century. And, and okay. Uh, okay. Okay, Brandon? Yeah, I think it passes the historical test. Somebody would recognize the building. Um, okay. if they came back. And so I think it does. Okay, Amy. Yes. Okay, um, Chris. Um, so this is a really strange way that they modified this building because they changed um, the siding on the, on the front and then the north side, but not the south side. And the south side has like the original shingles and windows, um, but it's just, you know, it's a basic gable front building and so it retains form. Um, and so I would go with this one. I mean, I have it on my worksheet as being contributing. Okay, um, let's see, we're back down to page. Okay, I'm ready this time. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, yeah, I agree, uh, contributing, yeah. Okay, so we will recommend that 5776 South Rapp Street be a contributing property. Everybody all right with that? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. And I believe this is our last building. Is this correct? Two yeah. more. I have two what more. Do you have, what do you have oh, as the last yeah. one? I, I only have one more after this. I just have the view house. I have oh, the view house. house. And then the Curtis Street, but we're still working on that one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because the, Cur the Curtis Street was online from last month, but the, but the handout that we got this month did not have it on there. So that's, that oh. might be. I think it's oh. because we don't have a survey it's form for it. never surveyed. It was just kind of tacked on to um, the Master Cutters building. And so th that's the one that um, I offered to survey and I'm working on it. Okay, so let's for the for the 5739 South Curtis Street, which is probably not on Paige's, Brandon, or Jason's forms. We're going to come back to that one because you're going to work on that one, right, Chris? I, I've been working on it, yeah. Okay, all right. So really, we only have one with, with the um, with, with the one that Amy's researching. We could do it in okay. May. Okay, okay. So we'll all right. So we will discuss that one, the 5739 South Curtis Street next month, along with. Um, the Paget um, the Paget accounting chart. Okay. Wow. Okay. So the last property we're going to discuss is twenty six seventy six West Main Street. Um, this is the Buzard Motor Company, and this is the current view house. 
um, built in 1929. And um, David and I disagreed on this one. He said contributing and I said non-contributing. And I'm gonna tell you why, and I know we're just gonna just Uh -oh. A building where the brick, you know, goes up and down, unless you knew that that was the original front, that building to me does not look historic. It does not, to me, it's, it's non-contributing. Now I know historic inside it's historically, they've kept a lot of stuff, but to me, that building just is non-contributing, but that's just my opinion. And I'm, and I'm, and I know there's other opinions out there. So Rick, go ahead. Andrea, can you pull up the historic photo? Please. I think that people need to see that. They didn't change the facade shape when oh. they redid this building. Yeah. The, the windows changed, but the facade shape did not. They and filled think, the garage doors in with yeah. windows, but yeah. they kept the, the problem, fenestrations the same. I think my problem is, is that you don't see that. You see the view house behind it. So, and I'm really willing to go either way. I'm just telling you what my first gut reaction was, was like, oh my God, you'd never know that was historic. 2676, Andrea. Rick, oh, thank you. Talk about the, the paint color and how that makes that rooftop thing jump out like you explained it to me. Yes. So what happened with this project when the architects designed it to go oh, back wait. to it? Can I interrupt you just for one yep. second? Let yep. me point out that when I had this discussion with Andrea last month and, in, and again in February, when we talked about this building, mm -hmm. she did point out that this building did receive a COA. Mm -hmm. And just because it did have a COA, it would have to be a contributing building. So that's just a point of reference. Go ahead, Rick. So what happened on this building, it was just an honest mistake. They, um, they put the second story up above the roof so they could maintain the original interior. The architects selected a black facade because they thought that would emphasize the brick. Mm -hmm. Problem is the building's on the north, the south side of the street. So it's always in the shade. And so it didn't work. If it had been white, you'd be able to see it. Or if they pulled it back about five feet from the facade, mm -hmm. it would work too. But everyone who's ever eaten up there and you sit right there, it's really nice to just lean over and look down Main Street. But this is a project, this, this building is one of the most important ones on the street as well. It was a continuous, from, from the beginning until View House, it was a continuously an auto dealership or an auto repair shop, right from the beginning. So um, I, I felt it had, it was the only other building that had six of the seven integrity okay. statements. Okay, so, so you're recommending contributing? Yes. Okay, Amy, your thoughts? I recommend contributing. And it was a split decision for me um, because the, the the fenestration may be the same, but the effect, the feel of the windows has changed. Uh, but because the brick is still there and the shape of the facade um, is still essentially the same, even though it's a different color, um, I, I, I think, yeah, I agree. It's yes. Okay, okay. Um, Chris. Um, I say yes, it's got the step parapet and there are a lot of original features on that building. And I, I you know, I, I will say when I first moved to Littleton, I thought um, that was a new building. And then when Rick pointed out some stuff to me, I was like, oh, wow. I, you know, like now it just totally jumps out at me. And then when he mentioned about the black paint, I, I wish like they would repaint that because I think it would totally change how everybody feels right now. Um, okay. I, I'm definitely contributing. Okay, Jason. Yeah, 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 contributing, yes. Okay, um, Paige. I also think contributing, um, and we, you know, we talked about Palenque, I think at the beginning, and you know, that is another restaurant that had um, some changes made. And I think this one, I mean, you can definitely tell the facade um, on the front, so. I really wish they would have kept this like um, neon stuff that's in the 1997 yeah. picture. Mm -hmm. I think that looks cool, but yeah, okay. contributing for me. Okay, Brandon. Yeah, I would say non-contributing. I just think the 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 top engulfs um, the original facade of the building, and I don't see the the original um, bays based upon the reconstruction. So non-contributing. Okay, 
Okay, so the majority, um, it's five to two. So we will go ahead and recommend this building is contributing. Is everybody okay with that? Yeah. Yes, no concerns. Okay. Okay, okay now I believe we are finished. Um, shall I go back over again what we're uh, uh, recommending is contributing and non-contributing? Without a slideshow, I don't think I would remember anyway, which, what the different addresses are. Okay, well, we will put this all in the minutes and recommendation, recommendations for next month, correct, Andrea? Okay, That's right. so um, out of all the properties, we've got one, two, three, four that'll be non-contributing two that we're gonna do research further on and the rest are contributing. Is everybody okay with that? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so those are the recommendations we'll send forward. Can I make one comment? Yeah, go ahead. Um, and it's just, it's what, something that Brandon just said about reconstruction. And um, I, any one of us, I mean, Andrea or I can put something together. Um, reconstruction means something completely different than rehabilitation, than re restoration. So be careful about how you use those terms. This is not a reconstruction because that building, I mean, there is original fabric there. It's not like it was demolished and then they kind of reconstructed something to look like the original. So just be careful about how you, you know, you use those terms. Um, it, it can yeah, that's really, that's really helpful. Different. So a correct terms would be almost like a rehabilitation. A re, yeah, a rehabilitation is like an adaptive reuse of a building. Right. So they've taken something that had a completely different use and, and changed it. But, you know, there's still a lot of historic fabric there. Um, yeah, I'll just add that these are technical technical terms that um, the Secretary of the Interior Standards, you'll learn more about that later, this document has, has defined. And so they really do represent different types of projects. Okay. Brandon. Okay, I want to add to your plate, Andrea, but if, if you, because, you know, we can't send out something to everybody, but um, however it's appropriate, if you want to send a link to the Secretary of the Interior Standards, um, they have specific definitions um, for those, and that way everybody, um, you know, is uh, Michael, go ahead. Thank you, uh, Chair Gabriel. The uh, just wanted to note uh, that this is a direction to staff to include these uh, in a final recommendation, which will be voted on by the whole board in more of a formal um, uh, formal setting with a uh, in a regular meeting. So this is just okay. to, to staff on how to set that up. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. you. <laughs> Um, Andrea, the presentation for contributing structures number six, do we do that? Have we, have we covered that? Or are we going on to 21080? You're muted. Andrea, you're muted. You're muted. Can't hear you. <laughs> Sorry, if you there can believe go. it, my neighbor is mowing his lawn in the dark. Mowing <laughs> 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 at nine o'clock at night. Yes. That's awesome. Um, so um, it, we've covered everything that I believe that was um, specified okay. in the communication. So. Okay. Then let's do. Oh, sorry. Okay, so let's move on to twenty-one zero eight zero. The presentation and discussion on historic themes exemplified within the proposed downtown historic district. And I believe that's Andrea and Amy. Can we yes. take a, a oh, potty break? <laughs> sure. Does everybody want to take a potty break real quick? Five minute break. Five oh, minute break. We'll see you in five minutes. Close. All right. Okay. Five minute break.
All right, now we're going to go ahead and go back, um, go on to item number 21-080, um, the presentation and discussion on historic themes exemplified within the proposed downtown historic district. Um, Andrea, go ahead, or Amy. Okay. Uh, yeah, Andrea, do you need to do an introduction to this or should I just dive in? I'll just do a quick introduction. Um, so uh, we have now completed the work of work groups one and work groups two, and we've finally gotten to the work of work group three. And this was done by Amy Fisher and by Kim Field. And uh, uh, they, I believe, did a very nice job on their project all in one month. And um, it is presented here tonight for discussion. And uh, it is getting late at night. And if need be, we could try to fit it in with next month if we can't get through it tonight. Okay. Do, do we have a cutoff, like a nine o'clock cutoff? Or uh, what, do you, what do you say, Mike? Do we need to be cut off at nine or can we go a little over? Uh, oh, that's a good question. I might defer to you. Uh... Ashley on that, but typically meetings should end at nine o'clock unless there's a to, uh, well, to go longer. Okay, let's, we, let's dive in and get started on this and see where we're at at nine o'clock. We may wrap it up. We may want to, you know, come back anyway. So, so let's okay. just dive in now if that's okay. Okay, go ahead, Amy. Okay, thank you. So do you all, did you all get a, I think we all got a copy of this Word doc uh, in the email, right? Yeah. Okay. So um, I don't know if you've had a chance to look at this or not. I'll talk you through a little bit of the thought process as we put this together and what the parameters were that we were working with and how, how and why um, we selected certain buildings. In some cases, we didn't really have a rationale and others we did. So uh, our directive, as Andrea said uh, in her introduction, thank you for that was to, to try to bring the, the pieces and the themes and the context to life. So think of this document really as providing context around various buildings in the historic district. Um, one of our parameters was that we wanted to keep this, we were directed to keep this to two pages. So uh, that, that was our big challenge actually, because there's, there's so much to say ab about downtown and, and the, the story and the evolution of it. So uh, we, we started kind of selecting what we thought were the headline type themes, um, agriculture, county seat, automobiles, et cetera. Some of the themes that have come up tonight uh, in our previous discussion. And um, so we, as we were putting those together, um, just as background, I'm an archivist professionally and a librarian by training and I have to classify things. It's, it's a compulsion with me, apparently. So uh, we decided to, to break up the story into three sections. So the first section is the very early origins of settlement in Littleton as an early farm town. So when um, Richard and Angeline Little arrived and when the Bowles family arrived and all the early farmers arrived and started to create this, this town called Littleton, it really was focused on agriculture. And so that, that was our first kind of theme. And then um, we evolved into the next chunk, which is commerce. And then I, I very loosely hung dates around these um, just to kind of make sense of them and give them context. So we've got the early farm town, which is agriculture, commerce, which was you know Littleton becoming a commercial center of the area. And then the, the third kind of big chunk is the post-war suburban town that, that we recognize when we talk about the arrival of Marathon um, Oil and um, Martin Marietta and so on. So I'll just read through kind of the highlights of the themes. Um, and I, I'm sorry, let me just state one more thing. This really is not meant to be the narrative history of Littleton. It is meant to provide context to the buildings downtown. So that, that really is the, the purpose of, of this document. So we start out um, as an early farm town with agriculture kind of as the driver here. And then um, we selected just a handful of buildings to illustrate these historical themes. Um, so for agriculture, we talked of course about the, 
the house that the Littles built. Uh, it, just one quick note, as I was reading through this again tonight, I realized that, oops, I left out a comma, which of all things is really important. So in that first paragraph where it says, um, local farmers would build the first rough and ready flour mill in 1867, there should be a comma there and the adjacent grain elevator. It, it reads like the Littles built their house in 1867, which they did not. So that's important to note. Um, that came later. But the, the, the point of, of the agriculture theme is that the, the early kind of business or activity of Littleton really was concentrated um, along Rapp Street where the grain elevator was, where the Littles house was, where the creamery was, and then eventually um, J.D. Hill's general store, um, which really was a, a, it has sort of a nice story as a pivotal piece in, in Littleton, it kind of um, stands in both the early section, the early farm town theme, and then later on, it, it really was the center of civic life or a center of civic life. All right, so we've got the, the first section, early farm town. The second section um, is the, the commerce era. And so we talked about um, some of the community life. So civic life um, around Littleton, so that would include um, the new town hall, which was built. So um, the early leadership of the town would meet in J.D. Hill's general store. Um, but eventually they decided that, that the, the town, especially after it became a county seat, was worthy of a beautiful town hall um, for our town leaders to meet in. And so they uh, commissioned what we now know as the Town Hall Arts Center. Um, the Carnegie Library, of course, was built. And then um, when Littleton became the county seat, the courthouse um, was built up at the other end, the, up on the hill, kind of overlooking town, um, looking down on us. Uh, another piece of commerce was that Littleton was a mercantile town. So all these farms had, had developed around Littleton. Homesteaders had arrived. They started to establish bigger and bigger farms spreading out further and further, but Littleton was really the um, commercial draw for people quite a distance um, south and, and well, really in all directions, um, southeast and west, not north so much. So we use the Coors building um, as an example of the, the mercantile town. So businesses that supported the agricultural businesses around um, started to arrive. And then for transportation, we, we debated this. We, the, just from a, a chronological standpoint, um, we could have put rail in the, the first, the, the agriculture section, um, but I preferred to keep our, our transportation pieces together. So uh, Littleton was served by rail fairly early on um, in our existence, uh, going back to 1871. Um, and I, I hadn't realized this until I started doing more digging and more research. Um, and I think Andrea first pointed this out actually, that there was an electric streetcar line in 1907 connecting Littleton um, to the Denver tramway by way of Englewood. So I thought that was interesting. And then uh, House Waring writes about the, um, the Uncle Sam train, which really was the first commuter train carrying people from Littleton up into Denver four times a day. So it was frequent enough um, that people could start to commute, um, not just for, for shopping or retail, but, but actually for working. Um, and then of course, there's the automobile, which we've talked about so much tonight, um, talking about some of the buildings. So um, as we've seen tonight, many, many of the buildings, particularly on the West, not, not exclusively, but particularly on the West end of Main Street, um, were tied in some way to US 85, um, which was the, the route to Santa Fe. Um, so of course we've talked about service stations, um, selling gas, doing car repair, but also um, car sales um, as you get further east up Main Street. Um, let's see, and then we, we put Alamo Avenue here in this section um, because that, that was sort of the, the time that, that um, Alamo was, was at its peak. So there were residences, there were buildings along Melinda Street, which became Alamo Avenue earlier in the um, early agriculture section. Uh, but, but this is the time that, that Alamo really kind of 
became more of a commercial place and it looked, it, it took on the look that we see today. And then finally, we move into the post-war suburban boom. So it was, it was really tempting to pull ourselves east up Littleton Boulevard. And of course we, we couldn't do that. So instead we, we uh, pointed out a couple of buildings um, that are more modern downtown. So the Green Bride um, of course is, is just a beautiful representation of the older buildings being changed and, and repurposed for a different use, but, but kind of showing that um, 1950s uh, look. And then some, there were businesses downtown to support the racetrack. So even though the racetrack was north of downtown, um, there was an impact in downtown uh, with the, the Winter Circle as an example. And then finally, um, as new manufacturing came in, um, we, we see some examples of this along Rapp Street, um, but also as we go up Littleton Boulevard, we see some of the new modernism um, buildings. And so we pointed out a couple that are downtown um, in the district. And so the old Van Scock building, now Jack S. Hill Grill, and um, the Chase building, the Littleton National Bank building is a nice representation of that. So that is two pages worth of context um, to all the buildings. So the, what a the question, wonderful document. This oh, is really great. I'm, I'm very thankful. So the, oh, thank you. So the, the question that I have for you is, do, do these headings make sense? Does this kind of layout or, or approach make sense? And Chris, I see your hand up. I guess I, I have a question yeah. prior to anything on that. Like, why are you restricted to two pages? <laughs> because I, I feel Andrea? like this is a good start. And, and I was kind of confused well, about a couple things in there. So you telling me yeah. that you're restricted to two pages. Yeah. So I, I, as to why it feels like there's like towards the end where it's just kind of like, oh, and then there's this racing thing. And then there's this oh, thing. And um, we're done. Yeah. So like, I, I don't want to, like, I think there's good information, but I feel like we, there's something missing. Yeah. Me. Well, I, I, I'd like Andrea to, to weigh in on this. My, my understanding though, is it's about our audience. So this is meant to be kind of context for city council to be kind of a quick um, explanation or support for the other pieces that city council is getting. So, so they'll kind of understand the relevance of the other pieces we're presenting. That's, that's exactly it, Amy. So uh, we, we do have historic context for downtown Right. And so we, we have a lot more information. And this was a product specifically designed to be included in the in the application that moves forward. And uh, there will still be a statement of significance and that will be something that I work on. But uh, the idea of highlighting themes and tying it to specific buildings, at least in my mind, I thought it was very effective and a different no, way a start. Of, looking, of looking at it. Yeah, I, I can see the use of that. I um, I don't know. I, I just feel like it's missing something. Well, we will have the statement of significance too, right. and you know there will be um, a little bit of history in it too. But we, yeah, we have to. Um, it's people have to be able to read the um, the application. And, no, I get yeah, that. Right. So um, at, at this point, just uh, Amy, I thought you did a fantastic job. I like the way it was broken into three time, different time frames. That kind of that kind of makes gives you an, a, a point to, to focus on and say, okay, this is the farm time. I really, really like that. But with all that being said, does, do we do we need to discuss this further, or do we go ahead and and direct um, Amy to give this to, to Andrea to, for consideration with the city council, or do we want to just to discuss again uh, in May on the historic themes? I think we need to add a little bit more to this. Okay, now um, Andrea I, said two pages, so. I know, but we're talking about 85 buildings in downtown and so, Mike is yeah. And our, our point, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Rick. But, but the, the point is, yeah, we have a council that only wants two pages, but this document has to be, defend our decision for the new boundaries explicitly. 
And what I would suggest, I like the themes. I would like to suggest that you go to the National Register document, which mm -hmm. identifies four areas, which yes. we partially cover in here. Yeah, yeah. Commerce. I mean, we kind of covered D, right, in this section, in this piece, which was. Yeah, they well, they have commerce, political, and government, oh, transportation, oh, yeah. and architecture. And really, most of yeah. downtown's about architecture, but and if you're tied to those yeah. themes, you don't have to explain them, but I would reference them by page and number and pull some things out from there in order mm -hmm. to better define the downtown. But also, if you follow those themes, it can allow us to expand the district in the future as well beyond just two streets. And that's my is, is that is that the point of this document or is that is there a separate piece that would cover that? Yeah, I, I think if there were a desire to expand in the future that that would be addressed at that time. I also that's feel great. that um, just like many research papers, there's a bibliography for more information and and that um, people can go to the bibliography for further information to understand more of the justification and how the application meets criteria. I would so cite that then specifically in the document because we have three documents we've done on the history of Littleton. We should cite that existing history. I know we don't have to repeat it, but it's been done for us already. No one's gonna read these documents again. That's my concern. And there's a lot of good points in there. And like one of them, which I read was, um, and it's in the, it's in the 1997 survey as well as the National Register nomination, which justifies Rapp Street going to, Al to Main Street. They cite specifically the original commercial area was moved from Main Street from Rapp Street to Main Street in the late 1890s. That's a very important statement for what happened on Main Street, which ties the Melinda house, to the, um, the little um, house as well. My other concern is of pulling out Alamo Street by itself. Uh, it isn't an entity by itself. It just happens to be yeah. a street with a lot of residential. And I think we need to relate the residential a little bit more broadly um, okay, that, yeah, that's policy. helpful feedback. We can do that. Yeah. Okay, so it is nine o'clock. Um, should we go ahead and um, further discuss in this in May? What do you think, Andrea? Well, uh, I think if we can just uh, wrap up by giving staff any direction, I think we just heard a little piece right there if there's anything else. Okay, is anybody, uh, Chris, go ahead. I was just gonna say, um, I, I think, a few things need to be tightened up in it, like for consistency sake, like there's some typos and then there's a couple of things like um, where you put addresses behind, you know, in parentheses behind things. And then towards the end that disappears. Can you tell two people wrote this? <laughs> and it, I understand like you guys were rushed yeah. and you know, that kind of thing. So that's why I'm saying I, I proofread nominations, you know, so yeah. that kind yeah. of thing jumps out at me often. Oh, sure. So, so um, would, it, would it be all right um, for any of us to give um, recommendations or changes or thoughts, send them to Amy? Is is that legal to do, Stacy? Ashley. Ashley. Ashley, I'm sorry, gosh. It's nine o'clock. <laughs> really, I guess I just need to understand the direction from staff. If staff is needing you all to give her directly information you can do that um if that's what andrea is seeking is direction from the board you can one-on-one -on -one give direction to andrea so i think i need that clarified if not and she's wanting to do it all through amy for additional direction you're allowed to have one-on-one -on -one communication with board members um, but typically if it's staff looking for direction you would go directly to staff yeah i think i'd like to uh keep the keep it coming to me uh, okay as the one who has how this application is going to come together. And I'm very happy to take um, ideas from the board and incorporate it into it. 
But I think if individuals start contacting Amy or you know Kim, then it could potentially be confusing because we're not all together in the same room. Okay, so then I guess what we're gonna do is then everybody, if you have a thought, um, go ahead and send it to Andrea and Andrea will then take those thoughts and, and work with the report that Amy and Kim came up with. Is that, is that what I'm hearing? Okay. Okay, uh, so. Do you have a ahead. targeted date that you would like that any comments by? Well, that's, that's a very good point. Let's Please don't say see. tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> 10 o'clock. <laughs> 9.30. Um, I'm gonna say by, actually by uh, Monday, May 3rd. Okay. Okay, so at this point, if you have any thoughts or changes or information that you'd like, by May 3rd, we go ahead and send that to Andrea. Is everybody okay with that? Okay. Um, then let's go ahead and try and wrap the meeting up with, I've lost my page. Um, any administrative updates? Mike? Steph, Steph has um, updates. Okay, yes. go ahead. Yeah, so there's going to be yet another additional HPB meeting and you will be getting a copy of the agenda soon. It's scheduled for this Saturday, May 1st at 8.30 a.m. It'll be a walking tour and Rick Cronenberger has agreed to um, his idea to offer this up uh, in particular for, because we have some new members, but anyone is, it's a public meeting. All HPB can attend. Um, it's a study session. We don't need quorum and members of the public can attend although they can't participate. Okay. okay. Um, anybody else staff, anything else from you, Andrea? Uh, that is it. Okay, any um, board members have any updates for the board or for the study session? Chris? I just have a question and I, I'm hoping it's okay to ask this question. Um, so Ashley, stop me if, if I can't ask it, but um, Andrea, you mentioned about um, at some point we will have a statement of significance. Yes. Is that something that the board gets to look at? We're looking at timing, but hopefully so. Okay. okay. Mike, do you have something to say? Oh, uh, just a clarification, uh, Chair Gabriel. Um, earlier it was brought up uh, the, the nine o'clock rule is actually, we looked up the uh, bylaws and regular and special se sessions of all uh, boards and commissions should end by 10, unless there's a special vote. Uh, with a study session, we can't really vote, so we suggest ending by 10 uh, is, is the, Rules. So I wanted to clarify that. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you. Now that we know we can go to 10, does anyone want to go back over historic themes or, or shall we just go with what we've decided? Go with what we've decided. Yeah, okay. we'll just comment on, I would like to, Ashley, if I can, can I explain what's gonna happen on Saturday? Um, <laughs> Probably not at this point. It'll be in the public notice that goes out tomorrow. And so the rest of the board knows this was kind of last minute brought to our attention too. It's not mandatory. Um, it's just we need to publicly post it uh, because more than two board members may be there and you are looking at historic buildings. Um, but that should, Andrea, go out tomorrow. Is that right? With a description of what the walking tour would be? That's right. And the description will be pretty brief. <clears throat> but okay. it, essentially it's it's a walking tour and it will be downtown okay <laughs> i wish i okay. could explain a little bit more since okay does anybody else have any updates for um for tonight okay then i'm going to go ahead and adjourn the meeting at 906 thank okay. you all for for joining and we'll see you at the next meeting thanks mike thank you everybody for your There's a groove that I can find that's exactly right for me. Right, right for right, exactly right for me to live in an optimal way.
Thank you. 